Hello, hello, hello. So I am here, but I wanted to show you guys Shade because you guys never get to see him. And he's sleeping in the chair at the moment. That's why I'm standing beside it. But I'm gonna have to pick him up and move him so I can sit in the chair. But I just, I wanted to actually give you guys a chance to check him out because you pretty much never get to see, see Shade. So this is Shade. This is actually Ember's brother. They're from the same litter. And he is incredibly sweet, but he is going to go and sleep on my computer desk instead. So I just wanted to show you guys him because he's just super cute and was sleeping on my chair. And then Mist, of course, is sleeping under my feet and Ember is sleeping on top of the printer and Shadow is in the box over there. So everybody is here. It's kind of funny. All right. So let me know if everything looks okay. Um, you can hear me okay. You can see everything okay? Let me know. Hello, Marcy. Hello, Harriet. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Greatly appreciated. I did kind of get my monitor situation sorted so I can actually like look at you and read the chat, which is kind of nice. Although it does look like the camera is a little bit blurry. Let me know if it is and I can see if I can fix that. All right, so we're going to make envelopes. Sound and video is great. Okay, perfect. It's funny on my end, it's so small on my end, like it's like, like this big. So on my end, it looks a blurry, but I can't tell. So hello, 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 Christine. Hello, Cherry. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Oh, UK must be late for you. The UK, you guys are quite a bit ahead, right? I think, I don't know my time zones very well. So bear with me. So we're gonna make some envelopes. I need to do slimline and mini slimline. I think I have uh, 11 p.m. Oh, okay. So not, uh, that's not late to me as a night owl. That might be late for some people. I don't know, but thank you for hanging out with me, Cherry. I really appreciate it. And if I pronounce anybody's name wrong, let me know. Cause I can see it in the chat so I can, you know, pronounce it properly. But so I need to make about 40 slimline envelopes. I think I need 44 mini slimline envelopes. And then I have a couple of cards that are like weird sizes. So I'll have to measure them and figure out the sizing. So I pulled out, this is really cool. This is a uh, basil cardstock. And I don't know if you guys can really see, but it's 
textured and shiny, but like subtly so. And I like this for envelopes. I think it's really fun. And I just, I kind of had it in a few different colors. This isn't gonna be enough to do every card obviously, but I thought that if these colors matched something specific that I could use them. So I bought like one sheet of each color and then a couple in white and I think one in black. I mean, there were other colors. These are just the colors that I really liked when I was looking at them. And I think there's like one cream and then a couple of white and then a black, but they're all this like shimmery material. I thought that was really neat. I do make my envelopes out of 12 by 12 cardstock. I know. Well, Marcy, you have to think that like, I've been making cards for a long time and I don't, unless I'm gonna send it right away, I don't actually make it an envelope. So I have to kind of, you know, make it envelopes now because now I'm gonna have them in that market and attempt to sell them. I don't know if I wanna sell this card, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what I would do with it, but it's so pretty. And then it has like a little butterfly on the inside. But yeah, I need a lot of envelopes. So we're gonna do that. So I figured I would show you guys a couple of different ways to use the uh, punch boards. Cause I am gonna use punch boards to make envelopes. I mean, there are dies to do envelopes. I have a slimline die set. I don't generally use it cause I'm too lazy to bust out my big plates. Um, any card you see that I show too, if you're interested, there is a matching video for it somewhere you'd have to go find it but because there'll be like three years of cards here somewhere and you know what Harriet I, I buy all of my a2 envelopes because I send those the most but when it comes to and I have some five by seven envelopes that I purchased because I like to send pen pal stuff in five by seven because I like the bigger size um, but then when it comes to kind of like, these are really odd size. So like this, I think is almost six by six. Uh, we're going to see. Yeah. See, it's like just over on this side and actually I think it's just over on both sides. So you would almost need like a six and a quarter by six and a quarter envelope to fit this. And of course, I don't know if they even make envelopes that size to purchase. I'm sure that somebody does maybe, but I just figured it was probably easier to make my own. And then I think this card is five by five, mm, just over like five and a quarter by five and a quarter, not even, it's like five and an eighth or something. But so like they're weird sizes. And then I think this one's six by six. Cause it was just whatever my biggest nested circle die was, was whatever the card became. Oh no, it's like five and a half by five and a half. But so I just, I just make my own envelopes cause I figure why not, right? And then it's kind of fun because you get to pick the cardstock that you're using. So like I get to use this fun shiny paper. Yeah, see? So that's what I mean. Like I and you know what it's funny? I bought I bought the slimline die, or sorry, the slimline punch board, because it makes slimline cards. But it's mini slimline, it does seven by six. Which is really odd to me, because my mini slimlines. Like, I don't understand why the mini slimline would be seven inches by six inches on here. Cause to me, a mini slimline is three by six when I make them. So obviously there are different sizes you can make, but I make my mini slimline out of a six by six piece of cardstock. So then it's three by six, right? So they're huge on here. I've, I've made them. I can show you one that I've made with it. Let me grab it. It's just over here. Um, I have all of my cards sitting over here so I could like check out what I needed. But so like this, this is the envelope that it ends up making, <clears throat> which is really weird because it, like, I don't, I don't understand this one. So like, this is the slimline. So this is the card that I made. And this is actually bigger because I made this one to be uh, three and a half by six, just so it would fit in the envelope a little better. But this is the envelope it makes for mini slimline cards. But most of my mini slimline cards are like three three by six. So then this envelope is just, it's huge, right? So I don't actually use this to make mini envelopes, mini slimline envelopes, because they're just, they're really big for the cards that I make. But I do use it for the slimline envelopes because it wants you to do seven by eight and a half. And I make my cards seven by eight and a half when I do slimlines. It's like, that's this one. It's actually eight and a half. And then it's seven. Well, I mean, it's folded obviously, but, but yeah, so I don't like this board for mini slimline cards, but if you make your mini slimlines bigger than I do, then this board would probably be perfect. 
I don't. So it's just bigger than what I make mine. So I don't, I don't like it for that. Uh, so you can use the one, two, three for mini slim lines because it, it'll give you the measurements for that size because it's, I do like three by six. So it has a three by six measurement. And that's what I do for mini slim line cards instead of this punch board. But this punch board is amazing for slim line. I love it for slim line. I can show you the envelope it makes for slim line as well. Because of course, again, I have, I have boxes of cards sitting here so that I can make envelopes for them. It's so bad. And then I have to be careful because the cats want to get in them. But like, so this envelope, <clears throat> excuse me, this envelope is the, the one that made the punch board makes. And so it fits them like with just a touch of room. And sometimes I need that room, right? But yeah, so I don't know. I don't like it for many slimline cards, but then I can use my punch board for that. But I can actually show you. Hi, Brooklyn. Um, I can actually show you. Oh, message retracted. I don't know what you said there, Harriet. I missed it. Um, you need to invest in one, Marcy. I, they're my favorite. I love them because I like to make my own envelopes. And instead of having to like guesstimate the, or like have specific measurements, I can just do this. So I find this way easier personally, but I mean, up to everybody. I mean, personal, personal, you know, preference, but, but yeah, so I can show you a slimline card on this or a slimline envelope. The only thing is that it isn't quite the right size. So we have to trim it a little bit, but if you only want to invest in one, I can show you all of the sizes on just this one, but because I make so many cards, um, I, I have both, <laughs> but you don't need both unless you want both, of course. So, uh, let me see. Harriet, you made a five by seven card when your niece got married and you made an envelope for it. Oh, fun. I bet you it turned out beautiful. I, I like when I make my own envelopes, I like to like stamp on them and stuff, right? So if I use, I mean, when I make them, when I make the card, we're not going to be doing that today because we have a lot of envelopes to make, but I like to, when I make it, like you can stamp on it and stuff at the same time, right? So I could, if I wanted to with this one, I could like make the envelope and then stamp the trees along the bottom or something. And that would look really cool, but Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on the, the questions and anything so that I don't miss anything. If I do miss it and you don't see me answer it, just ask it again. I just, I might miss it somehow. Um, but yeah, Harriet, so this, I like both. You don't need both. Eh. But it gives you like, because this one only makes slimline. It'll tell you like if you want a large slimline, this is your paper size. So it's nine by 11 and a half inches. That's why I like 12 by 12 paper. You don't have to, obviously 11 and a half. No, you couldn't use a standard piece of paper because it's eight and a half by 11. So you have to use 12 by 12 for slim line. You don't have to for other sizes, of course, but completely up to you. Cherry, I love making matching envelopes. Me too. They're just fun. I don't, we're not going to do that in the mass make of envelopes today, but I like to make them when they match. So the best we're going to do today is, you know, try to find a color that kind of goes with what we're working with. But um, other than that, we're going to have a hard time uh, actually, like, I don't have time to stamp on them. The market starts on Friday, so it's less than a week away now, and I just have a bunch of stuff I have to organize because I want to sell the stickers that I, I drew and designed as well at the market. So, and I have to design my table, and I have to um, make a price sheet, and I have to get a like, square set up, and there's just a bunch of stuff that I need to get done. So, sadly, we are just making the envelopes, no matching. But I thought we might kind of walk through the few that I can show you different ones. If that's what you're here for, we can kind of get that. And then we'll just like assembly line make them. So that is kind of what I'm thinking. So what do you guys want to see first? We could, maybe I'll show you slimline on the one, two, three punch board first, because that's not how I like to make my slimline now that I have the slimline punch board. Um, but no, I have never, I have never done a market cherry, not, not once. Uh, Brooklyn, you just asked what got me into paper crafting. Thank you. Your work is amazing. You're so sweet. I've seen your drawings, my friend. So talk about talent hanging out in this chat room. Um, Brooklyn is one of my pen pals. Um, I believe uh, as long as you're the Brooklyn, I think you are. I could be wrong. Maybe you're not. Uh, but if you're the Brooklyn, I think you are. Um, 
then you are one of my pen pals and your artwork is stunning. Um, you know what? Honestly, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, it's cherry. It's very scary. Um, I, I got hurt at work and I was off and I went on YouTube and I was just, this was a couple years ago and I went on YouTube and I was watching, you know, random crafters and I stumbled across, I think it was Christina Warner and Amy R from Prairie Paper and Ink, who is also Canadian. Um, and I just, I fell in love with what they were doing. Okay. I thought that was you. Um, and I fell in love with what they were making and I was like, you know what? I could do this. I could totally do this. And I hadn't really been paper crafting before. Like I hadn't really made anything. I hadn't really, um, it wasn't really one of my hobbies necessarily. And, um, I just was like, I could do this. So I went and bought a few random things and started doing it. And then I was like, you know what? I could teach people this. I don't know why I thought that. Not that I can't teach people this, but I don't know why I thought that when I had made like a handful of cards. And then my husband and I got married and I wanted to make all the thank you cards myself. And I did design our, uh, like our wedding, our SVP and all that stuff. I designed it because I went to school for graphic design as we were like right before we got married. And I, um, I just decided I was going to create stuff. So then I started creating stuff and then I was like, I'm going to teach people this. So then I had to teach myself how to, um, how to, you know, edit and record videos and do voiceovers and do like social media marketing and just all these different things. So it was so funny. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm just like, I'm going to do this. And I did. And <laughs> I don't know why it was really funny, but that's, that's uh, yeah, that was kind of how I got started. I just saw other people doing it and was like, I, I can do this. So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny. Hey, and then I got really into pen pal stuff, which then kind of like snowballed the, I'm going to do this thing. So, uh, cause I love, I love sending mail to people. I love that. So yeah, that's kind of, kind of how I got there, but yeah. So on the one, two, three punch board, if you want to make a slimline envelope, these are the measurements you need. So you have to have a piece of paper that you've cut down to nine and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And then you're going to punch it the three and one eighths. And I'll walk you through how to do that because we're going to do it all together. And we might as well do this one because this one's actually sitting on my desk. Although if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly put my stamp on it because I don't want to make it an envelope, put it away and then realize I didn't stamp it. So I'm just going to quickly give her a stamp and that can dry while we're we're doing that because I just made this one and I just forgot to put the stamp on the back so yes cherry it's my first one I'm like terrified and very excited at the same time so kind of funny but I mean I don't know I'm okay with like selling nothing but that's perfectly okay because it's just gonna be a, a super learning like I'm just gonna learn right and I'm okay with that so hopefully you guys can still see oh no I guess that's under my face there we go so we're just going to let that dry for a second. Draw out your table space. You have how much you decide visitors to see. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you for the tips, Alice. I really appreciate that. Cause I honestly, I'm going in with like pretty much no idea what I'm doing. So that's why I'm, I'm a hundred percent okay if I don't sell anything. Cause this is just going to be a really good learning experience. I signed up for a mother's day uh, one as well. So hopefully that one I'll sell a few things at, but we'll see who knows. Uh, but yeah, so let's get my trimmer because that's just, I don't think you guys can actually see. Well, maybe you can see it. It's up behind me there. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer so we can cut down the cardstock. I think I'm going to use my rotary trimmer for this just because I'm in love with my rotary trimmer lately. And the only reason, okay, so if you're on the Marcy, especially because if you're thinking about getting one, I strongly suggest you get the one, two, three punch board. You can get the envelope maker because there's one that looks exactly like this, but it's specifically just for envelopes. The only reason I would suggest this one instead is that if you want to make stuff that's slightly bigger than, uh, I don't even know what the biggest one is, seven by seven. So anything like a slimline or whatever, you don't get this arm if you don't have the box one, right? And so if you have a longer piece of paper, you have to score it like this. If you don't have this, it stops right here, right? So it's very short. So it actually makes it slightly harder to, to do. So if you are going to buy one, I think this one might be slightly more expensive than the envelope, like the, just the envelope punch board. 
Um, but I strongly suggest getting the one, two, three, just because honestly, you can make every envelope that I've come up with on here and then you have that arm. So just a thought if you actually are thinking about buying one, but that is my thought. So let's find a piece of paper we like that matches this. None of these are really, uh, what do you think? What do you guys like? Yellow, orange, red, white? Tell me your thoughts. What color of cardstock should we grab for this one? And of course, if you have any questions, please ask. Let me ask, answer them while I'm here hanging out with you. Any questions you can ask about me, you can ask about, you know, my cats or whatever, whatever you want to ask about. I'm happy to, happy to hear questions. Yellow. Okay. Let's see what I have for yellow. I actually, it's funny. I don't generally have much. Well, I have a lot of 12 by 12 cardstock, but that's only because someone gave it to me, not because I actually had any. Uh, okay. So we got two votes for yellow. Nom Robles. I'm not sure what that means, Alice. Have a card machine too. What's, oh, a card machine. Yeah, I got the square. Um, I don't, I don't know what the equivalent in, in the States would be, but the square is a Canadian, at least I think they're Canadian, um, company and they, um, they have like the, and it's got like a tap so it can tap your card or it has a chip reader so you can stick your card in. And then of course I'll do cash and you e-transfer all that stuff. So, uh, have a card machine. I've done three day conference. Oh, for geography teachers. That's awesome but the drawings really helped set it out. Do you mean like your signage or do you mean like you had a draw that people could put their names in to win something? Cause I have heard that's really important. Again, I've never done it cause this is my first table, but um, I have a sum up. Oh, okay. So that, that's probably like the version of square that's in the UK. Yeah, same idea. It's just like, it's a little, well, it's a little square and it, you can tap your card on it because we have tap technology. And then if you need to insert to like put in your pin, it has that too. And it just works off your cell phone or your tablet. So that's pretty cool. All right. So this is, oh, there might be a couple of greens mixed into this. Apparently, apparently I don't know how to sort my card stock very well. So let's pull out the green because we're not going green. Bear with me. My card stock's all messed up. So let's find a similar ish color if we can uh, maybe a light yellow maybe something like these I mean we're not gonna get a perfect match because I don't have a ton of paper what do you guys think well that's well it's not horrible what do you think about this one it's kind of yellowy orangey a little bit I don't well, I have more orange no, I don't need your help, sir, but thank you. He's trying to get in the cardstock box. I have my cardstocks just sitting in a big bin on the beside me here. So we could do this color. Are you going to come for a visit? Hi, you can come up. The ladies would love to see you. And gents, if there's any gents hanging out. I don't know if there is. Um, I don't know where we could go. Well, see, I don't have a ton of yellow which is kind of funny. Actually, it's not. It's because my, mo <laughs> my mom loves yellow. So every time I make her a card, she gets an envelope in the yellow. So I don't have a lot of yellow. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, you can see his tail. <laughs> You're going to see his head here in a second. Yeah, there he is. Hi, sweet guy. You want to pick a color? So this is shade again. He's just hanging out. Um, they're all a little bit greeny. Gardening with cats. It's always funny, hey? They, they just, they want to be in everything. So if you ever receive a card from me and it has a cat hair in it, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I just, I have a lot of car, a lot of cats. Uh, my Aussie is 19. Aw, Alice, that's sweet. My, uh, my Ty was 17, I think, when, we, when he passed away last, last year. So I, he was my first adoption uh, by myself when I'd moved out. So he's like my first, um, my first kitten. I don't know if I like this color. Uh, we might have to go orange because sadly I don't have a lot of yellow. Because like I said, I tend to give them to my mom because yellow is her favorite color. What do you think, sweet guy? Do you want to pick a color? I mean, we could go kind of like this. What do you think? How about this one? Maybe. He's blocking your guys' comments. Now I can't even see what you're saying. Um, 
Thoughts on this one? I don't, well, I do. I have more orange if we go orange or we could go red. I did see someone say red. I like orange. Oh, Cherry likes the orange. Uh, I'd use the piece under the top tan. Do you mean like this one? Sorry, I have to deke around him to see you guys talking. It's, it's almost a little bit green though. I mean, it, well, depending on what you're comparing it to, I suppose. <laughs> I can't see. Uh, use the piece under that top tan. I like orange. <laughs> Thumbs up. Yes. Love, love. Love, love, Brooklyn. Love, love. Okay, what about this one then? So I'm between these two, what do you guys think? We'll go either the yellow or the orange. You guys pick. I don't mind either way. They're both really pretty. I'm going to take the rest out though. So otherwise we're going to sit here and pick one piece of cardstock for six years. And you guys probably do actually want to see me make something. Although I'm, I'm just happy to hang out with y'all. So that's okay too. But we'll put the yellow back in so I can keep it partially organized. All right. Orange or yellow. He's blocking your comments completely. So, uh, what kind of reds do you have? No, Brooklyn. <laughs> We're not bringing out more colors. Otherwise, we'll never make anything. Uh, orange, orange, orange. Now that it's pulled out, maybe not. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Uh, okay, we're going orange. Let's go with the orange. All right, good call. I just, it's a little bit green. That's so funny, right? Like, uh, it's just a little bit greener than I was hoping. <clears throat> okay, orange we're doing. So, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I almost like choked on my saliva there. All right, so we're going for nine and three quarters. Isn't that the, what was the Harry Potter? Nine and three quarters was the Harry Potter. That's kind of funny. Okay. If you don't watch Harry Potter, then that probably means nothing to you. But all right, so that's nine and a half, nine and three quarters. This needs to be higher on my desk. Okay, there we go. Can you guys see? Uh, I don't think you can see the measurements. Oh, hold on. Let me shift this up just a touch more. There we go. That's okay. All right. I mean, I'm indecisive. Fair. Fair, Brooklyn. Very fair. Did you end up making the pen pal pocket that you were talking about? <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll have to let me know. Uh, okay. Nine and three corners. And then obviously nine and three quarters again because you're trying to make a square. So nine, nine and three corners. Okay. So this is how you would make an envelope with the one, two, three punch on the uh, slimline size, right? This isn't how we're going to make the rest of them, but this, I'll show you this one to start with in case you only want to own this punch board because you can do it. All right. So we'll pull our arm out because this is a large, this is where I mean like with the large piece of cardstock, like, cause you wouldn't be able to do this. Cause, well, you can do it. I shouldn't say that, but it stops here. So if you need to score like down, you can't, right? And then my punch point is three and one eighths. <laughs> Nine and three quarters. Yeah, King's Cross. I mean, indecisive. Uh, orange, orange, orange. Good. I'm sorry. He moved now so I can see all of your comments. Oh, oh that's funny. Okay. Uh, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Hey, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Hold on one sec. Sorry. He's trying to get in my slimline box of cards and that. I just, I don't need that kind of help today. <clears throat> I know, sweet guy. I know. You just sit there. No, no, that's, I don't need your help. No, no. You go there. Thank you, guy. All right. <clears throat> so three and one eight. So you want to punch first and then score. At least that's how I do it. And I'm going to use the ball tool. You can use a bone folder. It comes with a bone folder. Right here. You can pull it out. I tend not to prefer it because it's plastic. And I find that it leaves like a line. I find plastic bone folders do that. I don't like that. Uh, so completely up to you, but this is my preference. So three and one eighths, and it has the measurements. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. It has the measurements right here. So you can see where it says three and one eighths. So I punch and then first line. This is where the arm comes in, right? Because if you don't have the arm, it would have stopped like here. Okay, so then we line that up. So then you line the groove in this groove. So you kind of just, all right, you need to lay down. There we go. So you can kind of feel, you, 
I can feel it. Obviously, you guys can't feel it, but you can kind of feel it where it like sits in the groove. And then you're going to punch again. And then we're going to do with the next one. So obviously, long side, short side of the envelope. Right? So then we're going to do it again. Now, this one should obviously line up with your three and one eight. There's, yeah, three and one eighths because it's the same as this side. But you can kind of wait until you feel the notch. Punch. Punch like you mean it. Don't push with one finger like I just tried to because it doesn't actually work. Right? And then we turn for the fourth time because you need four, right? Because we're going to do four folds. And there we go. This is our envelope. So I like to curve around the corners. But this is the envelope right here. So now you can just fold it and you would have an envelope. The only problem that comes in with this size is that you can see like this is longer than this. So these two are gonna try to sit on top of each other. That's why I like the slimline board, but it doesn't matter. Like you can easily use this and I'm gonna show you how to modify it. So there's your punched pieces. I just chossed these in the garbage. You can keep them if you wanted to. I don't really care, but. Uh, I wanna go to the UK so bad. It's like my bucket list. I love Harry Potter too. It's like, oh. one day, it's on my bucket list. One day, so one of these on the top here, this one, like you can't see it, but it says right here, corner slitter, because that's for the box, so they stick together, and then corner rounder. So obviously use the corner rounder if you want to round. There's no point in rounding those, we're gonna cut them off. And hopefully this like isn't super loud for you guys. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna do our corners. <clears throat> Right, so now we're just going to do our score lines. Sorry, not our corners. We did our corners. We're going to do our score lines. So obviously I fold in because the, this cardstock is two different shades. So I pick based on what shade I want. Obviously, I mean, this almost would have been, I'm just saying that's almost pretty. But we're going to do the bright orange because that's what we picked. I'll show you about so many magical places. You know what? I Yeah, the UK is on the top of my list one day <laughs> it's just kind of expensive of a trip from canada to get there so it, it is on the list though there's a few places i want to go so badly and the uk is high on that list uh, europe actually like a lot of europe is just on the list but, and my husband and i've been married five years this year and we're trying to decide what to do i don't think we're going to europe but it is on the list but here you can see what the problem is right so like you can't this wouldn't work because there's no way, like, how would you, like, you know what I mean? So hopefully I'm explaining this well, but yeah, this, this doesn't work. So we cut it off. So it's, you can totally do it, right? You can totally make a slimline envelope, no problem with the punch board, the one, two, three punch board. And there's a fair amount of room in this. I make it a little bit bigger because I tend to have stuff hanging off of my cards. Uh, so this would allow, like, if you had butterflies or trees or something coming out, this gives you that extra you know, that little bit of extra to kind of have something hang off your card, which I tend to do. Uh, if you don't, I mean, we could make it slightly smaller, but then you'd have to play with the measurements, which of course is what I did to get to this. So, uh, yes, Scotland would be phenomenal. Brooklyn, Ireland's on there too. Um, Wales, like I just, I want to do pretty much all of Europe. I'm just, I just want to do it all. It just, I don't know. It, I know that that's not, that's not, technically Europe, Ireland, and England, and went on, but, um, or sorry, England is Europe, right? You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, and hopefully I don't sound ignorant. I don't, uh, I don't know my geography super well, <laughs> but you know what's funny, Brooklyn, is it stupid expensive to just go across Canada? Like, a flight, my husband had a trip to Toronto for work, and now I'm on the west coast, right? So I'm like, I'm near Vancouver, for anybody who doesn't know Canada very well, I'm on the West Coast, I'm in British Columbia, and I'm, you know, in the same province as, as Vancouver. And now Toronto's on the east side, right? So we looked at me going just for like three days while he was there for work, and it was the same amount of money as we could go to Mexico for a couple of, like, for like six days or something. Like, it's insane. So we, we I didn't go, we went to Mexico instead. Like, it's... Like, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's, it's really expensive to go across Canada. It's just mind-boggling to me. So then I take my money and I'm kind of like, wow. I'm think, we're thinking about doing a little, like, mini moon. Um, so I say that. When we got married, we, we took our, our honeymoon, like, 
uh, five months later. But when we first got married, we did like a mini moon and we actually drove um, down. So we drove down British Columbia, went into, I think we went into, mm, you guys can correct me, the Americans can correct me, but I think, is Washington the one that touches Canada or is it Oregon or do they both touch? Geography is not my strong suit. Um, but we drove down, down British Columbia. We drove into the States. We went through, uh, we went to Seattle. We went to Oregon. I know Oregon's a, pro a state, not a city like Seattle. But we went into Oregon. We drove around Oregon. We drove around Washington. Um, and then we, we, yeah, we stayed in Seattle. We stayed in a couple of different places. And we just kind of like drove around. Yeah, like it was just, it was a lot of fun. So I might, I might consider that to be uh, what we do for our, our mini, mini, or our, would be our anniversary, I guess. Not our, it's not our honeymoon anymore. We've been married for five years this year, but, but yeah. So for this, I kind of, I like, you can, you can measure it if you want to be more careful, but I, you guys know, I don't measure nothing really as a general rule, unless I'm, you know, have to make something very specific. But so I kind of just cut it and then I'm like, okay, do I like where that is? That's a little bit too short because you can tell because this is going to hit it. So it needs to be slightly less than that. Uh, I've heard the infrastructure of Canada is challenging. It's interesting, <laughs> Cherry. It's very interesting. Uh, if you want to come here, fly to Europe first and then do short hops over at UK. Yeah, I'd love to take the train. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to ride the train across Canada because Canada's flipping huge and I have no interest, but I would ride the train across Europe. That just sounds fun. Uh, it's like, find the West coast, the East coast. The, is it expensive in the States too, to fly across just, just your country? Like to me, I think it should be less expensive for me to fly across Canada than it should be for me to fly into different countries. Like, yeah upsetting anyway so we're just going to trim this down a touch because I want to be able to fold that flap okay so there now this flap isn't hitting it well it still hits it just a touch so we could take a touch more off but um did where'd you go in Canada Marcy Cherry your dad lived in Vancouver Vancouver's neat have did you ever get to visit him in Vancouver because I just Vancouver is just, I love the vibe of Vancouver. I don't love the price. I would never live there because you can't buy a house. Well, you can if you have tons and tons of casholi, but I don't have tons and tons of casholi. Oh, Vancouver area. Yeah, Vancouver is just cool. I love that city uh, to visit, not not to do anything else. My husband and I, yeah, we used to go there all the time for the, the um, fair that they put on and concerts and whatnot. We went and saw um, the Book of Mormon there the uh, theater show and yeah it's pretty amazing we visited family a couple times in Vancouver what did you think did you like it <clears throat> yeah oh I guess hey Newfoundland's an island I mean you'll have to correct me Brooklyn because again I've never been to Newfoundland because Canada travel is expensive but um I go to my husband's family's on the island the Vancouver Island or Victoria, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, I don't like that. I can't just do what I want when I want. That upsets me. But there you go. So we're just going to adhere this bad boy together. I like to do those in the bottom. I use double-sided tape because I find that the easiest way to do it, but you could use glue if you want to kind of just give it a sec to bond there. Let me pull out my double-sided tape. Where's the open one? Okay. Where's it on there? He lived in Ontario too. I've never been to Ontario. Yeah. No. It, again, because traveling across Canada is really expensive. You can drive, but the problem is, is that it's big and therefore it takes a lot of time. And, you know, unless you don't work, kind of hard. Yeah. Fairies. Yeah. That's what I thought. I just flipped this around now. I don't even know what top side was. As long as it flat closes, I'm okay with it. Uh, I have, see, I've never been to Ontario. Ontario seems pretty cool. 
And then I like to put tape on the bot the, the side flaps just because I find that the easiest way to not worry about it trying to adhere where I want the card to slide in. There, there. Niagara Falls is pretty amazing. I have been to the other side of Niagara Falls. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, not the Canada side. I've been to Vegas a few times. Vegas was fun. Actually, maybe I have been to the Canadian side. I was just really young when we did it. But there you go. So there is an envelope. Made from the 123 punch board. Okay, so now that this is bowed out, I have to trim just another smidge off. You see, this is the thing. It's kind of like a guessing game. And it works. So if you only want to buy one punch board, like this totally works, right? Uh, and I just cut that super uneven. Let's try that again. I mean, you could do this with a trimmer. Not now, obviously, but when we started doing that. There you go. But yeah, so there, like it has an envelope that fits it perfectly so there and then of course I put um, double-sided adhesive let's do that now or I'll forget and we're not connected to Canada so do you just not travel Brooklyn like you just stay on the island <clears throat> excuse me Marcy, you have friends on Vancouver Island? Yeah, Vancouver Island is beautiful. My, uh, my husband's family's from there. So we go back. Well, I generally, actually, I don't go back very often. Chris goes back fairly often. So he can go and see it. It's so quirky. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny, hey, Cherry? Um, it works, though, right? Like, it's just a funky envelope. It's, you know... It is quirky. It's pretty whimsical, this envelope, because it's not really the prettiest envelope, but it functions. And if you only want to buy one, one punch board, right? Like, this is perfect. So there you go. Like, there's, there's an envelope. So there you go, right? Like, works perfect. So there's one card done with 39 to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, let's pick a different card and start. So I figure we'll start with the slimline cards and then we'll work into the mini slimline cards and we'll just do as many as we can do and then I'll just have to make the rest not hanging out with you guys because I need envelopes for all of these. So yeah, because the, there's three with envelopes right now. <laughs> That's all. So all of these still need envelopes. <laughs> that's kind of funny uh, yes they immigrated from the netherlands and landed in alberta Woohoo! and then they made to vancouver island yeah alberta's neat chris and i almost moved to alberta uh last year we didn't obviously but we <laughs> thought about it pretty seriously in fact so <clears throat> oh i'm just gonna set the water here Yes, it was. I mean, it would, would have been quicker if I wasn't talking the whole time, but they come together pretty quickly. That's why I like the punch boards, right? I mean, pretty, pretty quick. So, so we're going to pull, I just pulled a handful of these out. We'll find cardstock to match all of them. Oh, maybe I'll use that shiny black one for that one. Um, obviously there's going to be Christmas cards and whatnot in here, but that's how you make it with the slimline punch board or sorry, the M123 punch board. <clears throat> we'll actually use the slimline one now for the other ones. Cause it's even faster. So let's pick some card stocks and we'll get, get going. I like, can you tell I like rainbow? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, okay. Let's see. My friend wanted to be near the water. My husband would love to be near the water, but I'm, you know what? I'm okay with being near the water. My thing is that I, d I don't want to live where I have to take a ferry. Until my parents, like if my parents weren't around, that would be one thing. But while they're around, I don't want to be stuck. Right? 
like I don't want to be stuck and not be able to like if they needed my help I don't want to not be able to get to them quickly so that's kind of my thought but let's pick some papers so I think I might use that shiny black one for this card I think I think because it's really pretty and I think that would be kind of a fun envelope I might have to create the envelope and label so somebody can write on it but I think that that would be kind of a fun fun card for that and then maybe I'm gonna use these shiny ones first just because I can I'm thinking maybe this pink one for you guys tell me your thoughts black for black everybody good with that one if you want me to change the color we can I'm thinking this this pink one for this what do you guys think so let's pull the black one out we picked you a color you're good so for this one I'm thinking maybe this or we could look at a darker color um, I don't really have anything navy. The rainbow one, I could do white. I'm just going to use these shiny ones first because they're here and they're sitting on my desk doing nothing. So let's maybe white for the... What do you guys think? White for this one? Although this gold is freaking pretty. I don't have any gold. I don't have any gold. Uh, okay, good. So sold on that one. That one can go. Um, what do you think about this rainbow with the white? Thoughts? Because the problem is, how do I pick one color? It's rainbow, and I don't have a 12 by 12 in gold. So, that there's no gold. Otherwise, gold would go. So, you guys tell me about that one. What do you think? Um, I don't think I have navy. Not in the shiny ones, anyway. I probably have navy, like a navy. But then we have, so do we do white for both rainbow ones? That's true, it does match. And it matches the border. <clears throat> so, you see, like, it's on a white card base. So it matches that too. So I'm thinking white for both the rainbow cards because that would go with this one too. So I'm thinking white for both the rainbows. Do I have another black one? No, I only have one black one, sadly. Because <clears throat> I, I didn't know if I would like them, so I only bought like one or two shades of each. Oh, but this one's kind of rainbowy too. So I'm like, uh, dang it. I wish I had a gray one for that. I don't have a gray one. These are the only shiny colors I have. I have other colors, obviously, but not, not in this, like, cool, shiny, right? You guys can tell I like rainbow. Sadly, these are only the shiny colors I have here. So we could, uh, I mean, I would like a darker, maybe a navy one for that. So I'll look through the blues here in a second. Maybe it won't get a shiny one. And then these two, because this one's cream and this one's white. So I could do white with this one and cream with this one. I do love the shimmer papers. Right? I should have bought more. You feel like a light teal, like this one? Do you want this one for the teacup one? Is that the one you're, like this light teal color? Orange for the flower rainbow one. This one? A middle orange and yellow. Okay, well we can pull those oranges back out and see what we can find. What are the gray ones would look? I don't have any shiny gray. <clears throat> oh, that's good too. Do you like, so yes to the tealy one with the teapot? Okay, teal with the teapots. All right, you guys remember this because I'm likely to forget. Okay, so are we thinking none of these with these two? Let's see if we can find some navy. Although again, I probably have to create a label because how would somebody write on it? Navy, I don't know if I will. It's not, it's not as dark as the color on the card. What do we think about this one? I don't know if I have anything darker. Um, I do have black, like black, black, not fun colored black. Well, I only have one sheet of black left. Oh, oh that's thick. Yee. I don't know if I want to use that. <laughs> She's thick. Uh, let's see. Oh, hold on. Maybe I have some. Oh. Well, let's see. I do have some other shimmery colors, apparently, that I already had. Some of them have little notches cut out, though, so we'll have to watch for that. It might need to be used for, like, a slimline card instead. Um, so let's look through these. There's a cream one. There's a white one. Ooh, I don't know if you guys are set on that teal for the thing, but look at this one. It's, like, white with teal or blue-gray speckles. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. So you guys, do you like the teal better? Dark gray with navy. Mm. 
Okay, so we're gonna trade out this one. The teal is going back in the pile. That's going with the teapots. So the teal can come back over here. And then, oh, I have an orange one. It's not, it's not very close to this color. This is carved pumpkin. <laughs> I don't know, you guys can think on that for a sec. Let me look at other options. So we'll pull you out, because nobody liked you. So we're thinking maybe a gray. Let's see. I don't know if I have much in the gray. I have, well, I don't know if this, it's blue. It's just, I don't think I have as dark a blue as I have. Like I have this, but it's in an eight and a half by 11, not 12 by 12. So it can't, we can't use it for this. Um, what are you? Oh, you're just paper, just white paper. Okay. I only have the one sheet of black. Let's see if we have anything really grayish. Oh no, hold on. Maybe I have another sheet of black. I have this black. We could try that. What do you guys think about that one? What about brown or craft for the navy? Um, Let's see. I have a couple of browns. Do you thinking like a dark brown? I don't have like craft craft. I just have shades of brown. So like I have, oh, that's, I don't know if I like that. I mean, if I had gold, I feel like it's too, the black is too dark for the name because you have to, there's a black um, mat to this. I don't know if you can really tell, but there's, so there's a navy cardstock and then there's a black mat underneath the navy cardstock. I don't like that brown. So we're not going with that one. We might be at this for like six years. Just struggling to pick cardstock. Oh, here's a grayish one. It's got a weird, oh, it's got like a printed pattern on it. <laughs> nope, this is the wrong color. Um, we might have to just go black. Let me go back into my blues. I don't really have, I mean, I have a couple of browns, but they're not, they're just, I don't like them. OMG, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't like the pattern one. It's a neat piece of cardstock, but it doesn't really go with what we're doing here. I mean, I have some, but those, like, I don't like to use specialty papers with envelopes because the envelope pretty much just goes in the trash. Right, so like I have, I'm not going to use this for this, but I have like fun gold cardstock, but I don't want to use it because envelopes aren't, nobody loves the envelope. So I don't want to waste my fun cardstock on envelopes. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, well, I don't, I don't know. We're going black because otherwise we're going to stick here for six years trying to pick a color. Black it is. All right, next. What are we thinking for this one? Uh, you guys were talking about orange. So let me see. We want kind of like a subtle orange. Because no, that's like tan. Hey, Alice, you've done a market. What do you sell your cards for? And I know uh, that's a hard question because, of course, Canadian dollar is um, less than like the pound and stuff. Um, but I, I'm always interested because you always get that person who comes to like look at your whatever, whatever your item happens to be. And they're like, I could buy that at the dollar store for cheaper. And I'm like, yeah, you could, but it's not handmade. And it's not, you know. Ooh, teal for that one. Okay, Harriet, let's try it. <clears throat> we do have two. We have a lighter teal and then a dark. Well, it's not really teal. That's blue. All right, let's try the teal one. Oh, no. I guess we no. Okay. How about that? Thoughts? Yay or nay? I mean, I don't know. It's funny because, yeah, I don't know. People are always, not everybody. Obviously, some people love handmade. They see it and they fall in love with it and they're like, yeah, that's the most beautiful thing you've ever made and I want it and I'm going to pay the price for it or whatever. But then you have the people who are like, I'm not going to pay for that. 
that's too expensive. <gasps> Hello. Hello, my favorite person in the world. My husband just joined in the chat. <laughs> okay. Let's, well, we'll do that one first because it's already here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, well, fair. If you were doing a charity, then yeah, that's completely different. Absolutely. Hello, my love. Um, I think it's because handmade should cost a dollar. You know, it's funny because as a, like a business, a person who's trying to make a business, people seem to think that, um, you know, it should be like Amazon shipping times and dollar store prices. And, you know, it's just, it's so interesting. People are just so odd. Whereas I, like, I'm, I don't care. I'll wait. It'll come to me eventually. Like, I don't know, whatever. All right. So we're going to use the slimline punch board for this one. So obviously we're doing this standard slim line, which is what this is. Uh, so it's seven and a half by eight, sorry, seven and by eight and a half inches, which is what I make my slim line cards as. Uh, so we need nine by 11 and a half. So that's what we're cutting our cardstock to. But they put more money in. So normally it's like two pound to 250. What would you sell your cards for if you were trying to make profit? I, I know that you do it for charity, so that's completely different, but I'm always just, I don't know. All right. So, um, I guess I should pull the arms out. And then they, people don't read descriptions. Like, I always find that really odd, too. So we need 11 and a half. Eleven and a half by nine is what I said, right? I'd pay four pound for your cards. I don't know what that is Canadian. I'm assuming it's what, like seven dollars? Something like that. Uh, by nine. There we go. So that's what you're gonna start with. And I haven't used this punch board in a little bit, so we're gonna see if I remember how to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, take my tool. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh, well, we're just gonna wing it and hope that I remember. Card score line. Right, 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 right. Uh, it's roughly seven dollars. Thirty-six eighty-six. Are you saying six eighty-six? Because the three is where the dollar sign is, right? I, my keyboard's nowhere near me. <clears throat> it's about seven bucks, right? People don't realize that the dollar store cards are probably made by a machine or someone who is seriously underpaid. Hence, why they are in craft industry. Well, that and they're they're mass produced, right? Um, like cards from a dollar store are mass produced. So is Hallmark, mind you. But at least they pay their artists you know something well hopefully they're paying their artists I don't actually know what Hallmark pays but um you're taking a design that's mass produced right so it's always kind of interesting all right so card score line I probably should have watched a tutorial I don't remember how to do this well we're gonna just wing it and hopefully I don't know if I want to wing it on this piece of cardstock maybe we're gonna wing it on a different piece of cardstock <laughs> handmade not hallmark exactly i'm gonna take a color i don't really like and we're just gonna make a test one really quick because i don't want to mess up on a, a piece of paper we actually want to use because i haven't used the scoreboard in a little bit and it's a little it's interesting because you have to cut like this and i just want to make sure i'm scoring in the right area so two seconds here while i make sure i know what I, the heck i'm doing uh hallmark not yeah handmade on hallmark uh, jennifer mcguire says that all the time doesn't she Pretty sure. 11 and a half. That's not right. Oh no, it is 11 and a half. Hmm. Now, that doesn't seem right. Oh, cause the, yeah, okay, never mind. I know what I'm doing wrong here. Here we go. By nine. Oh, you know what it's throwing me off? It's because it also makes card bases. That's what's throwing me off. You can score on this scoreboard to make a card base. 
<laughs> that's why I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Nothing. It's just that there's two score lines because you can score a card base in the center. So if you like did your card and you lined it up, so if you did the card, like the paper size and you lined it up, the score line is in the center. That's why it's throwing me off. Cause I'm like, why are there two lines? And I just remember that's why, but we're still going to do a test one because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up on my paper. So you take this cool trimmer do and you stick it like this and then you cut and it cuts off that little piece. And then that piece is garbage, or you can keep it for spare parts or whatever. Uh, I've sold cords, cards before and did it for about $3 a card USD. I'm not sure if that translates into Canadian. If not, you buy a card store with even more. Well, like Hallmark though, Hallmark cards are like $8 a piece. So I feel like that's low, no? And then we're going to score at the envelope score line all the way down. And then all the way across this way. And then we're gonna flip and do it again. So this is why this one takes a, a thought for a second because it's just a little bit different. And it's kind of new, I haven't used it a lot so it's a little bit stiff too. And then we are going to score on the envelope score line which is this one down to where it goes across. And then across. And then with this one, because you still have to do these two corners, you actually have to flip the cardstock, which is why I think this board throws some people off. So now we're gonna cut, because we need the exact same cuts on both sides, right? And then ideally your score line should already be there, but you could redo the score line, right? Like, because you, you can see my score line, and now it's to side to side, side to side, because we've already cut there. So then I'm just doing the cuts, I shouldn't need to redo the score lines unless you feel like your score line wasn't um, tight enough then by all means, or sorry, it wasn't um, heavy enough, wasn't like you didn't feel like your score lines good enough. I don't know what the right word is there, but then, so there's your envelope, right? And that, see, this is what I mean when I said like my cut wasn't very, very good, but so then you flip it over and then like, here's, so like there's your envelope and you don't have to trim nothing. You don't have to like, here's like, right? So I'm going to save this one because I'm sure we'll find a card to match. Well, I don't work with that color very often. We might not find a color that matches, but that's okay. All right. Now that I feel better about that, let's do this one. And I don't think if it matters if you score first or cut first. I don't think that really matters. Uh, oh, I just cut my finger. Smart. Okay. Well, don't do that. I might have to put a band, yeah, I'm gonna have to add a band-aid. Give me two seconds, I'm just gonna put a band-aid so I don't bleed on my card envelopes. It's not the first time I've ever cut myself making stuff. <laughs> oh, one day I was taking the, the um, dye things off, like the little tabs, and I, uh, I cut myself with one of those tabs and they cut deep, like they're mean. So that's why one of the reasons I like love the Tim Holtz dies and stuff, right? Because there's no um, tabs that like hold the dies to the whatever together, I guess. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Ooh, uh, okay. I just I have a band-aid on my finger now so that I don't bleed on my envelopes because that's the last thing I want to do. Hey, you want to buy this envelope with my blood all over? But there's a blade right here, see? And it's just how I pulled it out of the... Oh, that time I wasn't in the channel. That is why this board gets a little bit more interesting because if you're not like if, if this piece is not in this channel, it's just a little bit more. So this is like user error. There's nothing wrong with the board. It's me. I'm special. All right. Okay. So envelope score line. And it does tell you at the top what score line it is too. Like you can see like card score line and envelope score line and that card score line. It's just so you can cut in the middle of a card or a score in the middle of a card. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it over. All right, let's do this again and not cut myself this time. Okay. All 
There we go. And it gets smoother too as you like use it. Again, I've only used it a few times. So. All right. Then we're gonna flip this bad boy over and we're gonna cut those extra sides. Okay, I'm like way behind in chat now. Uh, you did $3 per card. Don't know what that would be Canadian. Uh, $3 a card Canadian is probably around that same $7, $6 or $7. Uh, it's supposed to be a dollar more sign, yes. People don't appreciate it because it's original art. Well, some do, but they're sparse. Yes, Cherry, I agree. Um, I don't think people view cards as art. I think that's the problem. I think that, like, it's a card. Like, why would I have to pay prices for that? But, you know, I've seen people who, like, don't think that they should pay for people's original art either. So, I mean, that's just, that's people. Uh, I'm ready to go with, yeah, so the envelope's ready to go with no adjustments. It's just, it's a little bit <clears throat> more finicky. So you have to be a little bit more careful with this one. And generally, and once you've used it a few times, the channel, because this is so new, the channel doesn't want to, like, hold the thing properly so uh, the walmart range is five to fifteen depending on the complexity and exempt and they're still mass produced right so that's why it's always i find that really interesting because all of those are mass produced where did i put my bone folder oh it's right there What was the teal one for? The I don't remember what color this is for. <laughs> oh, guys, remind me. What was the teal one for? What card? Uh, it's hard to find. I find it hard to craft with band-aids on. Do you, Marcy? I don't. I just, eh. I just, I don't. <laughs> I'm a, I can be a bit <clears throat> rammy when I craft, so I, I don't know. I've cut myself with my scissors before, like, because my finger was in the way and I wasn't paying attention. I'm not accident prone. I just, I don't know. In it, I, eh, I've worked in healthcare so long. Eh, my cut doesn't really, it's not going to stop me from doing nothing. And in this one, I actually put the, on here, just because this is curved, so I just find this easier. But I mean, you can put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's not off the edge like that piece is. So let's trim that down a little bit. The rainbow flower card. Okay. Perfect. I knew you guys would remember. <laughs> it's a good thing you're here. Keeping me on the on my toes. Keeping me on the straight and narrow. I don't know. I'm just of the opinion that I'm going to ask what I ask. And you can choose to pay it or not. And I've had people say that I'm not asking enough. And I've had people say that, you know. Actually, I, have not, I personally have not had someone say that I'm asking too much. But I haven't sold to, like, random people yet. So maybe they'll tell me that I'm asking for too much. I don't know. But most of my cards, first off, they're one-offs. And second off, they take hours, depending on the card. So, you know, I'm not even, it's not even minimum wage. Mind you, it's a hobby. But you know what I mean. That is a cat hair. All right, there we go. So rainbow flowers, I'm assuming is this one, right? Yes, because there's no other florals there right now. So you see this, how, how like I have leaves sticking up. This still allows a little bit of space for that. Not as much as the one, two, three punch board. But you can see like that still fits. So I don't have to go and trim those off. And there you go. So... So there we go. One more done. Now I'm going to do it kind of mass production style because you've seen how both boards can do slimline. So I'm just going to kind of trim them down and, and get going. Oh, I didn't put, okay, let's not put that away as I didn't put adhesive on the actual flat. Uh Oh, wee woo. What's oh, a fire truck? I, uh, I live near the hospital because I worked there and I wanted to walk to work. So you guys will hear some of the wee woos. Sorry. Um, I bought my dad a birthday card not long ago. 
And it was one of those 3D ones, and it was close to 20 bucks. Canadian. Uh, 3D one. Like, it pops up. Harriet. Does the envelope board allow you to make different sizes of envelopes? Because everyone has different sizes. The slimline one doesn't. The slimline one um, only does the two sizes it kind of has stated. But the one, two, three punch board does. So I don't know if you can see this. But I don't know how well this guide's going to show up. But you can see here, like, the card size for the envelope starts at two and three and a half. And goes all the way up to seven by seven. And then it does, like, increments in between. So it literally has three rows of card sizes or sorry well they're card sizes and then it's what the envelope would be <clears throat> if that makes sense so like we're gonna do okay let me do this deck of slimline and then we'll go and do those funny sized ones and I'll show you how to do that on these but yes so I, hopefully that answers the question so the slimline one just does slimline um, because that is its purpose but the one, two, three does a whole bunch of different sizes. And then if you're really adventurous, you can go and figure out what other sizes are like when I was making slimline envelopes with it. That's how I figured out the, the sizes for that slimline envelope we did first. All right, let's assembly line these and then we're gonna do envelopes for those kind of funny sized ones. So, so if you have any questions, go ahead, ask away. I'm paying attention to chat while I cut paper. So 11 and a half. By nine. You are very welcome, Harriet. Anytime. And I forgot to put up affiliate links for the punch boards, but I will once the live is done. So if you are seriously interested in buying one and you, you know, wouldn't mind sharing some love with me. Please use the affiliate codes if you don't mind. I would really appreciate that. You don't have to. Completely up to you. But I appreciate it if you want to. If you're going to buy it anyway. All right. All right. All right. What is the favorite place that you guys have traveled? For anybody who's traveled. Well, even if you've only traveled locally. What is the favorite place that you guys have gone? Um, I have to say that mine was probably Mexico because uh, my husband and I, before COVID, we used to go every year. <clears throat> and then, of course, COVID happened and we, you know, didn't do anything. Uh, and then, of course, since it has kind of lifted all the rules, we started going again. And I just, I love that place. I love it so freaking much. Like, I just, I don't know. There's just such a, we always go to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, so for anybody who's gone to Mexico, um, Puerto Vallarta is... I've only been to Puerto Vallarta, so I can't, I can't speak to any other part of Puerto, uh, Mexico yet, um, because we went, like, when we, we'd been together, I don't even know, a year? Mm. Yeah, I think it was a year. Uh, we've been together about a year, and we took a trip together, and we went to Puerto Vallarta, and I just, it was the first time I'd been to Mexico, and I just loved it, and so we, we went back every year since, uh, until COVID happened. Um, but otherwise, yeah, and I just love it, love it so much. So I, I need to try different parts of Mexico, but so far we just keep going back to Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> One day we'll change and go somewhere else, but. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you push it together a bit and it becomes a 3D object. Well, there's one that had from Star Wars. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I'll have to go and like look it up because I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that would even look like. So it was like a circle? Brooklyn? The card? It was like a circle? Um, have sparkly lights too and a QR code to website and YouTube. Have something like that if you're working on too, even if it's coloring. Yeah, normally, Alice, I'm a little more organized. I just, I'm um, having a day. I don't know. I mean, I cut my finger making an envelope. Like, you know, just having a day. I normally have all that stuff prepared, but... This is my second live ever, so I'm a little, <laughs> I don't know, you know what, I wasn't even sure, like, I added a countdown timer to it, and then realized it was way too long, but I, like, hey, you know, I'm, like, slowly, I'm slowly learning, learning how to do this whole live streaming situation, 
Um, so yeah, that's, I don't know. That's, that's all I know how to do. And of course it's just me because my hubby's at work today. He was in my life, my first live stream. He hung out just to make sure that the sound was okay and whatever. Cause you never know. Maybe nobody's going to come hang out with me. It's just going to be me. And it's kind of hard to have a conversation by yourself. I mean, I guess I could, I don't know, tell you guys a story or something. Oh, you mean for the craft stall? Oh, pfft, of course you do. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, of course you do, Aleph. Uh, some sparkly lights. I don't know if I'm going to have sparkly lights by next week, but good idea for the Mother's Day one. Um, a QR code to my website and YouTube. Okay, well, I don't have a QR code. Um, have a QR code. Yeah, I don't know if I, well, I'm sure there's a website that does that. I just, you know. Um, I do have business cards because I have an Etsy shop. And I thought for um, like working on something, I don't know, tell me if you think this is a bad idea. I, um, I'm working on drawing, right? So I, uh, I thought that I would take my iPad and draw while I'm just sitting there doing nothing. Um, but I don't want it to look like I'm like playing on my tablet. But at the same time, like I, I'm learning to draw digitally. So to learn to draw digitally, <laughs> I have to practice digitally, right? And uh, it's a music festival. It's not actually like a market necessarily. So there may be like zero interest. So I'm like, well, I can practice my drawing while I, you know, I'm sitting there doing nothing. So I don't know. You tell me if that sounds like a bad idea. I don't know. I, I just, cause I have to do something cause I'm not just going to sit there and twiddle my thumbs all day. I mean, I don't even know if I get a chair. I hope I get a chair. Maybe I should go buy a chair. I don't even know. All right. So those are all cut down. So now we're just going to do the part where I try to cut myself. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Alice, Mozambique? Tell me if that's correct. Where is that? Progresso in 96. I don't know if I know where those places are, so you have to tell me. Uh, my aunt and uncle live in Merida. Kathy, I'm not sure. Where, is that in Europe? The UK somewhere? Merida? I'm not sure where that is. Sounds cool. Uh, I went to Cancun. So fun. Yeah, Mexico. See, Brooklyn, Mexico. I just, I haven't been to Cancun. I've only been to Puerto Vallarta, but I just, I don't know. I love, I love the vibe in Mexico. It's just really, really fun. Uh, you've been to Tijuana, Cherry? Very cool. That was years ago. We were on holiday in California. Is, California must be really close to the border of Tijuana, right? I think. Uh, we went to, was a cruise ship was not a cruise ship day. So the restaurant on the beach was so good. I uh, see, I want to do a cruise. That's another thing that's on my bucket list. One day I'm going on a cruise. I just think it'd be a lot of fun, especially, I don't know. And I don't know how realistic this would be, but those crafty cruises that like Christina Warner was talking about, how fun would that be to just go on a cruise and craft with some cool people? Hello. Like that just sounds lovely. I don't know how realistic that is, but it sounds lovely. Uh, Germany. Ooh. But Germany would be interesting. I had a, I've worked with some people, um, back when I lived in a different town and Germany was, I had a, a, a person who were, was from Germany that I worked with and he was a pretty neat dude. Super into photography. So he always had these like stunning photos to show me. That was a while ago now because I've, I've moved up to a different place, but uh, 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 I've been to Tijuana. I also drawn to San Diego and Los Angeles. San Diego is close to the border of where Mexico and California meet. Okay. I've been to, uh, San Diego cause San Diego has the zoo, right? Um, yeah. Cause I, I've been to Disneyland. I've been to Disneyland once as an adult. And I went once when I think we were 10, my family went. Um, so Disneyland's a lot of fun. It was a blast as an adult. I really want to do Disney World. It's on my list. Oh. There we go. It's, <laughs> I'm pushing too hard. I need to simmer down. <laughs> Sorry if that was loud. Ooh. I know when I went and it was... Hmm. I can't even tell you, Marcy. I don't even know when I went. It was like 
15 years ago, I think. It was a while ago when I went to Disneyland. Um, but we went to the zoo in San Diego. Um, and it was a lot of rescue animals that couldn't be put back into the wild. So that was, that was kind of interesting. It was really neat to see. Um, yeah, so that was kind of cool. Like, I'm game to support. Um, I don't like, like, capture. Like, that kind of, I don't generally go to zoos. But that one was uh, rescue for animals that couldn't, couldn't be released again because they were injured or whatever. So that was kind of, that was a cool experience. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little rammy. It's my problem. <clears throat> I'm pushing too hard and the poor board doesn't need that. Uh, I love German beer, but I live in Wisconsin, so no surprise there. <laughs> oh, I don't like beer. So I'll take your word on it being good. Because that doesn't sound tasty to me, but that's okay. I've been on an Alaskan cruise and I loved it. Yeah, see, man, I want to do a cruise. I need to win the lottery. Or, you know, I'd have to play the lottery to try to win the lottery, but there. <clears throat> a Nordic cruise sounds amazing. What? That would be amazing. I also, the um, Caribbean cruises sound lovely. You didn't like beer before Germany. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to know. Maybe if I go to Germany, I'll enjoy beer. I don't know. France. And I lived in London for 13 years. Kathy, it sounds like you've lived some really cool places. You were blessed as a kid. My dad worked for Corning. I don't know what that is. And we were sent to Poland. Ooh. So I got to vacation in many of the European countries. Greece, Spain, Germany, Austria, Italy. That sounds lovely. Oh, Kathy. Wow. All right, easy does it. Don't get rammy. There we go. See, it's fine as long as I don't push way too hard. <clears throat> uh, where in London? I don't know. That sounds pretty great. There's a few places I'd love to go. One day, they're on the bucket list, you know. It's one of those things. Corning is a glass manufacturer. Oh, okay. At the time, they made tube TVs. Fair, because those TVs had a lot of glass in them. Neat. I've never lived outside of Canada, personally. I've only ever lived in Canada and then gone, just traveled to other places to check them out. Um, <clears throat> Chris and I were talking though one day and we were talking about retiring to Mexico. One day. The, you just ordered the Slimline envelope tool. It's great. Just <laughs> don't be around me like me and cut yourself. <sighs> I'm Canadian and was born in Toronto. Kathy, that's so cool. I'm Canadian. Brooklyn's also Canadian. Um, what made you move to the States? Born in Toronto. What's Toronto like? I've never been to Toronto. I don't know if you were here earlier, but I was telling, telling everybody that um, I had the opportunity to go to Toronto because my husband had a conference there for work. And um, it was the same amount of money to go to Toronto for, it was like three days or something that it was for us to go to Mexico for like seven. <laughs> so I didn't go. And we, we went to Mexico instead <laughs> uh, for the same amount of money. So I like to, so, okay, you could, you could like, you know, put your card in like this if you wanted to. I don't like that. So I put it in like this. But you can make your envelope either direction. I just, I don't like that direction, so I do it the other direction. Uh, I've only traveled outside of the U.S. to Canada, Mexico, and then Turks. 
Ooh, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this one right. Cacao Silence? I don't know where that is. Marcy will have to tell me. I've never heard of that area. Oh, okay, Kathy. You moved because your dad worked for Corning. Okay, fair. Fair, fair. I, uh, I wasn't sure how old you were when you actually moved to the States. I don't know many people who, who've moved to the States from Canada. Um, just cause you know, Canada is pretty awesome. Not that the States isn't just, I love Canada, but of course I'm biased cause I'm from here. <laughs> so what do you do? Mm. And then you met your husband there. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Well, once you, once you're there, it's pretty kind of hard to leave. I would think, especially if you're making friends and you know, building connections and whatnot. It's pretty hard to, to come back, I would think. Not cows, cows. Like toes, cows. Okay. It's like K-cows. I don't know. I'm still probably saying that wrong, but where is that? Not cows, cows. Hey, you know what? Sometimes pronouncing words is funny in the English language. So, you know, bear with me. I try to get it close. I'm always worried I'm going to get people's names wrong and then I'd really feel bad. Oh, where is it though, Marcy? Is it, is it like a place or is it like a city in a place or? Welcome fellow Canadians. Oh, Brooklyn. Right. I'm with you. Brooklyn, we need to have a conversation about sticker sheets. I'm struggling so hard to make sticker sheets. So hard. Caicos. Oh, it's an island. Okay. The Caribbean. Is it in the Caribbean? Caicos? Oh, yeah. You said it right there. Sorry. Turks and K, K cows. Now you're saying it's cows. Oh, because you're correcting yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, Turks and Caicos is an island. Are islands off the Caribbean east coast of the U.S. Oh, cool. Are they tropic? Because the Caribbean usually is tropic, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, geography is not my strong suit. Okay, goes. Uh, I'm having trouble with your silhouette. Oh, Brooklyn, I'm with you 100%. I have a Cricut. A Cricut maker. Because Costco had them on sale a couple years ago. So I cut all my own stickers with my Cricut. And I'm just struggling to figure out sticker sheets. They're the next thing I want to make, though, so i got to figure it out. Uh, we used to have a pen friend class in Canada in primary school. It was so fun to see where they lived. I lived in Cambridge, UK. Oh, fun, Alice. I, I have pen friends now because <laughs> I'm old school like that. Um, I that has to be one of my favorite hobbies. What is your guys' favorite hobby outside of paper crafting? Because obviously we love paper crafting or you probably wouldn't be hanging out with me. But um, outside of paper crafting, what is your favorite hobby? One of mine, because I have a few, is pen pal. Like writing pen pal letters, making pen pal pockets, um, just building connections with people who live in a completely different culture and, and place than I do. Like it's just, I don't know, I just love it. It's so great. Like I just have so much fun with it. So let me know if you guys have like any favoritest hobbies outside of paper crafting because... Also, I read a lot, like a lot. I read like a hundred plus books a year. I'm not doing so good this year so far because I went casual at work and then decided I was gonna make this full time. So I'm actually, I haven't been reading as much as I usually do, but reading is a big one for me too. See, yeah, Brooklyn, your drawings are beautiful. I've seen a lot of your, I've been look, checking out your art on, uh, on Instagram when you post stuff on there. I'm struggling to figure out how to set up the sticker sheet. What program do you use, Brooklyn? Would like to draw your stuff. I use Procreate, but now I'm like, should I be using Procreate? Should I be using something different? I don't know. Uh, jewelry making oh marcy that's so cool one of my pen pals makes jewelry she does like wrapped jewelry 
and I bought uh, an amethyst pendant from her. And I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail so I can wear it. I'm so excited. But yeah, because you guys know I love purple. So uh, yeah, she, she does wrap jewelry. It's just so cool. Jewelry making is neat. Uh, the very old cricket needs cartridges. Yeah, Kathy, the old ones did. Now it's all online. And I think if you, not that you need to buy a new one, but if you ever did buy a new one, um, you can actually register all your cartridges in the design space and they just like sit there. And you can just pull them up like you don't have to change out the cartridges anymore, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I use mine. I draw all my own stickers or design them, depending on what it is. And then I cut them out with my Cricut and then I sell them on my Etsy shop or um, on in the market, which is what's going to happen next weekend. So that'll be interesting. We'll see. I think I'm going to sell more cards than stickers, though, just because uh, the the it's a bluegrass festival. So the majority of the people there will be seniors. And I think that seniors would appreciate my cards more than my stickers, but that's okay. I'm just happy to sell anything. Even though I've registered cartridges in the gypsy, I'm not sure what the gypsy is. Um, you'd have to explain that one to me. Hi, Karen. How are you? Lovely to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Hello. Hello. Uh, Alice, your daughter and her friend are pen pals. That's really cool. Yeah. I just, there's nothing better than getting something in the mail. That's not, well, I don't mean I don't get bills anymore in the mail cause they come by email, but, um, or yeah, most of my bills come email, but there's nothing better than getting something handmade in the mail. Like it's just pen pals, just where it's at. Just phenomenal. Uh, Cherry, cherry, you make bags, wallets, etc., out of vinyl and sometimes leather. Ooh, so do you sew? Marcy, you can too draw. Let me tell you, if I can draw, you can draw. I promise. It's one of those things, though, like priorities and um, practice. Right? Practice, 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 practice. You know. Um... My mom had a cricket and I borrowed it when I first started getting into this. And let's just say I gave it right back. <laughs> yeah, the cricket. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying, Brooklyn. Um, <clears throat> but I had a cricket before that because I used to use it. What did I use it for? Oh, vinyl. I used to cut vinyl on it. So, yeah. Oh, do you guys want to see that drawing that um, I won of Mist? Let me know if you guys want to see it. I uh, have it sitting behind me. I can pull it out and show it to you. A local artist. I won a gift card for a local artist, and she uh, was doing a pet portrait. And, of course, I picked Mist. Don't tell anybody else. Don't tell my other kitties. Um, we picked Mist, and uh, I got the portrait the other day. So if you guys want to see it, I will grab it and show it to you. You guys, you've seen Mist in dang near all of my videos because she is always on the desk. She isn't right now. She's sleeping under my feet, but she's here. They're all in this room. Uh, actually, Shade might not be. Everybody else is in this room. You use Procreate too? Okay, so how do you set up your sticker files? Oh, Brooklyn, we need to have a conversation. How do you set up a sticker sheet in Procreate? Do you lay it out beforehand? Uh... Oh, Harriet, you used to make jewelry? Very cool. That's a pretty neat hobby. I don't need any more hobbies, so, you know. But jewelry making is very cool. <clears throat> you said about magnets? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on the chat a little bit. Harriet, you love to read, although you haven't been in the mood lately. So you've been sewing and crochet. Oh, sewing. I, uh, I bought a sewing machine just to use it in journals. I think, well, you guys can't see it. It is behind me. Oh, actually, you might be able to see it. It's the, the uh, aqua machine sitting right there. Um, yeah, I, I learned a, a local lady gave me a couple of lessons on my machine recently. So now I can figure out how to use it. So that's pretty cool. Brooklyn, are you talking about the um, silhouette? See, I don't have a silhouette, and I struggle to buy a different machine than my Cricut because <laughs> I already have it. So, you know. For the gypsies, you can call Cricut customer service. Oh, crap. Thank you for answering the question. 
uh, crafty card maker. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Um, thank you for answering her question because I didn't know what the gypsy was. So that's really awesome. Uh, you have five crickets. That's awesome. What do you like to make with your cricket? Let me know. Oh, and you guys want to see that? Okay, let me grab it. <clears throat> I just have it up here because I haven't gotten a frame for it yet. <clears throat> but I'll hold it up in the this camera here, and then I'll actually lay it down on the table so you can see it. Hello, Peggy. Thank you for coming to hang. So this is it. I'll lay it down on the desk so you can get a better, better view of it. But... Yeah, that is the drawing of Mist that, uh, that uh, her name is Carrie. Um, yeah, and I won, I won it. Uh, I won a portion of it. I paid for her for her work. But um, yeah, isn't that cool? Like I just uh, love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's just, yes, it's, it's a Mist perfectly. Like uh, <laughs> I just love it. I'm so excited about it. I just, I need to buy a frame and then we'll put it up on the wall. But yeah, isn't that stunning? Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. So, and Carrie's a local artist. So very, very cool. Because I'm, I'm more than happy to support our local, local people. But yeah, isn't that pretty? I, yeah, just, I'm so excited about it. <clears throat> so that's pretty amazing. The portrait is, yeah, see? Gorgeous. <clears throat> How are you today, Peggy? Thanks for coming to hang. Angie, okay, good. Hopefully I'll remember that. It's hard because I always see um, the, the person's like YouTube name. So if it doesn't have your name in it, it doesn't always register quickly. Like I, I know who that person is. Did I just fold that backwards? Oh no, it's the same on both sides. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Hello, Karen. Thank you for coming and hanging out. Karen's lovely. She has one of the Facebook groups that I post stuff in constantly. Uh, I have a sewing machine. Yeah, I, it's funny. I literally bought the sewing machine just to add stitch to, um, to journals. So that's the only reason I even bought it. So I think that's pretty cool. So now I just have to figure out how to, how to use it. I love that envelope shape. Oh, glad to hear it, Peggy. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah, this is pretty neat, hey? This is the Slimline Punch Board by We Are Memory Keepers. And then I did I did earlier uh, an envelope with using the 123 Punch Board, just showing how it can make a Slimline envelope. It's not as pretty, though. Like, it, it's functional, but it ain't pretty. It's quirky and, and whimsical is <laughs> what I would go with for that. But it ain't, ain't real pretty, I don't think. <clears throat> uh, your sheets are four by six and I make sure I procreate and draw them and see I'm like hey, 600 dpi because I was Brooklyn I was reading that um in procreate you should lay out your sheet how you want it to actually print when you go to make the sticker sheet is that true let me know yeah Peggy because I did it in the beginning um I showed how to do a slimline card on the 123 punch board and then we jumped into the slimline punch board and I kind of just mass made a bunch right now and then we're going to make some custom sized envelopes for the um, odd shaped cards that I have that's next after I finish up these ones and then we'll probably jump back and do some more slimline cards and we'll just we'll hang out until you guys uh, don't want to hang out no more I'm probably aiming to be down about six so if you guys are good to hang out you can go or come and ever you you want to you know, hang out or go or whatever you got to do. But I'll be here making envelopes because I got to make them. I need them for the market. I need to get that slimline punch board. Yes, Karen, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, it's it's just so if you make a lot of slimline cards, like I, I make A2 more than I make slimline just because they're easier to mail to like my pen pals and stuff. But um, if you make slimline cards, the punch board is just like, it makes it so much easier, in my opinion. Um, and I will, I will add affiliate links once the live is done. I forgot to do it before I started. But if you guys want to buy from my affiliate links, I greatly appreciate that. Don't feel obligated. It's perfectly okay if you don't want to. Um, but I do appreciate it and it does, you know, help me out a little bit. So much appreciated. So yeah, let's adhere these bad boys and then we'll jump into making some, 
um, fun sized envelopes that are just a bit different. <clears throat> um, let's see. Karen, I have two sewing machines, one for fabric and one for paper. That's probably smart. Uh, good call. Karen, I, uh, I don't want to sew clothes. <laughs> I don't mind fabric. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that because you don't have to have fabric for clothes. But uh, Alice, you're heading to bed. Good night. Thank you for hanging out with me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, you have a great sleep and I will catch you whenever I see you next time. We will do more lives. So, you know, if you ever want to come back and hang out, please do. But you have a great sleep. I mean, I bought, I bought a bunch of Tim Holtz fabric because I wanted to use it in journals. And then I've never, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. So then it just sits there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm so bad. I'm trying to be better about not just buying things, you know, because I kind of, I mean, I think we all get sucked into that. And I'm really bad when Tim Holtz does stuff. Oh, he just makes the coolest <laughs> And then I'm like, oh, I need it all. And then I have to tell myself, you don't need it all. Stop it. And then, you know, because I, I even told you guys, if you watched my last video where I made the slimline card with the, like, sunset, I, I had no intention of buying that world die. No intention. I had bought the other, like, three of the other ones. I didn't buy the world or the pocket watch. And then I, uh, I caved and bought it because I watched the live. The lives are so dangerous. Oh, Oh, good night, Angie. You have a great sleep. Thank you for hanging out. If you're going to bed. I don't know if you're going to bed. You have a great sleep or a great evening, whichever. Thank you for hanging out. Much appreciated. <coughs> Cherry, how many sewing machines do you have? Do I have like a whole big collection of sewing machines? What do you do with them? What's your like your favorite thing to make with your sewing machine? Marcy, it's hard, hey? It's so hard. And I uh, I keep eyeballing that cherry blossom from Pink Fresh that I told you guys about in the last live we were talking about it. I keep eyeballing it, and I'm like, oh, you don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Did you see my nails? I don't know if you guys can see these. They're cherry blossom themed because, uh, you know, cherry blossom. I mean, ignore my stupid cut finger, but, but yeah, I have cherry blossom nails right now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, I am like in love with that cherry blossom dye and uh, I think it's a dye and a stencil from, um, pink fresh. Oh, I'm in a cave. It's going to happen. I'm trying really hard not to, but it's going to happen. Why did I just do that? Well, that was silly. I don't put the flaps on the outside. Oh no. Oh, woohoo. That was lucky. I forgot how I make envelopes there for a second. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Marcy. I, uh, I know it's kind of funny. I get, I get comments on my nails and my lashes all the time. And most of them are very positive, which is lovely because you guys are so kind. But every once in a while, I get a <laughs> not so kind one and I just laugh. Like I got a, a comment on one of my videos recently <clears throat> and it said, um, you need to get rid of those lashes. It was something like that. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it was that. You don't, you need to get rid of those lashes. And I saw it. I laughed. I took a screenshot so I could show my husband and then I deleted it because, you know, like I'm always of the opinion that if you're going to make comments on people's appearance, just don't <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, yeah, I just, I find it hilarious when people comment on stuff like that because I don't understand the, the necessity, but, but I mean, it takes all kinds to make the world go round, right? So why not? Why not? <clears throat> your nails are always so pretty thank you Karen that's very kind I try they're I don't know I I love having my nails done it's one of my favorite things ever and then it gives you guys something to see too because it can be like oh what Sierra's nails look like today you know like it's almost kind of like a fun thing for the videos too yeah that was lucky hey oh I was actually surprised the double-sided tape let me lift it Double-sided tape is really bad for that. All right. There we go. We're getting there slowly, hey? <laughs> if I didn't stop to read chat, I'd be a little faster, but what the heck's the point in B 
being live if you don't get to have a conversation with you guys. That's the whole point. And we're going to do it, I think, every two weeks or so. We will start making cards uh, together on the lives. But for now, we're not doing that because I have too much prep to do. I just have so much prep to do for this market. So this is what we're doing for now. Uh, yeah. I, well, that's probably exactly what happened. I got distracted thinking about them cherry blossoms from Pink Fresh. You know what? You guys are going to come back and I'm going to be <laughs> like, look what I bought. This is going to be the cherry blossom set from Pink Fresh. Oh, so dangerous. They have such great stuff. <clears throat> People who make those kind of comments are just jealous. You know, probably I just, I don't understand the point in ever making comments on people's appearance. Like, we all, you know, we're just doing our best in this world, so. What do you do? It's just kind of funny. I don't really understand why people comment on other people's appearance either. It doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. People are weird. You need one for heavy-duty stuff like apparel. Oh, you mean a sewing machine? You need a vintage singer. My mom has a vintage singer and I don't think I've, I don't recall her ever sewing. And I think it was just because it was handed down in the family, not because it was, you know, but I don't think, I don't remember her ever sewing. Um, but yeah, she's a vintage singer and I don't ask me any questions about it because I can't, I can't tell you. I have no idea what kind of vintage, like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it, you know, I don't know anything about it <laughs> other than it's a sewing machine and it's a singer. Um... Hi, John. How are you? You actually made it. <laughs> I didn't think you would. Welcome to the live. Thank you for hanging out. I gotta say good night. My sweet daughter is waiting for me, but I'll get on later to watch the replay so I can see the end. Okay, bye, Harriet. Thank you for hanging out. Much appreciated. You say hi and good night to your daughter or whatever you guys are up to. And I'll see you later or not. Depends on what time you come back. Like, I think, I think I'm going to end about six. So we have a little ways to go. Because I do want to make sure I, I make uh, the funny sized ones. So you guys can kind of see how that kind of works. In the 1960s. Yeah, see, vintage singers are so cool. Um, but I don't know anything about them. And it would be way too difficult for me to even, like... I have my little aqua one. It works beautifully. It does cool things that I don't know how to do. I don't know. It's pretty neat. I'll have to bust it out one of these days. And I would love to make a journal. So that's what we're going to use it for once I figure out how to do it. It's one of those things. All right. Yeah, see, I can't even tell you what year that singer's from. I don't know. My mom's had it. For forever as far as I can tell uh, yeah singer I, like everybody I know who sews has a singer like a vintage one somehow and the comments are usually from other women they should be bigging each other up do you mean like lifting each other up is that like a similar similar saying there Cherry I, you know what, it is funny because if I get negative comments, they're pretty much always from women and it's always really interesting to me. Um, just because like, what's the point? If you don't enjoy my content, why are you hanging out here? You know, like, why are you hanging out on my free content? Just, just don't. <laughs> like, it's just, people are odd. <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah, I, like everybody I know that sews has a vintage singer. It's really neat. I'll have to ask mom what the year of it is because I, I have no idea. Yeah, I just know it's a, a vintage singer. I don't, I don't know much about it. Sewing is not my forte. I just love how it looks in journals and stuff. So I had to cave and buy one. Oh, okay, cool. I'll have to look into it. Uh, it's great to see you doing a live. Well, thank you, John. Uh, I did one two weeks ago. Just... Just over, just under, eh, just over two weeks, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're going to be doing them probably every two weeks or so. Give or take, depending on what's going on. 
But I figured it was a good next step for the channel to have some live content so I could get to know everybody a bit better. Because it's pretty great to hang out with, with fun peeps, especially doing something crafty. And we're almost done these slimline ones and then we'll jump into them fun sized ones so we can make sure we get those done. <clears throat> So easy to use. Use it. What? The singer? No, I'm not using it. Boo. I don't know if that's what you meant, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, my mom doesn't live in the same place as me, so I wouldn't be able to use it easily anyways. And um, I don't... Sewing machines, though they're probably not that difficult, they seem difficult. I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like wrapping your mind around something like that is just... I... Ooh. One of those things that you have to kind of get there with and I'm not there with the sewing machine and it's it's not really a priority too right like I just want to sew some paper so it's not like I want to learn how to make certain things so I don't know it's it's not a priority drawing and painting are a priority for me now that's where I kind of want to go I uh I uh I've started painting a little bit and that's interesting I'm not very good but it's okay <clears throat> uh, both my mom and grandma had singers and they were really easy to use and you have a harder time with them. well the newer ones I guess would be more computer I guess because I mean we we just tend to go that way technology wise uh, we kind of just you know go more computer so mine is like super simple I guess but to me it seems really complicated I don't know just because I have to wrap my mind around it I guess um there's a website that tells you the serial number and where it's but that's cool cherry thank you for sharing that with me if mom doesn't know i will have to look it up and see you do daily they are fun oh no john heck no daily woof mm -mm. you know how much work that would be and then how would i do my videos no nah, we're gonna do like every other week you could draw paint then sew on it <laughs> There you go, Peggy. I had some like texture. That would be kind of neat, actually. Uh, just got on. What are you planning to make with the envelopes? So the envelopes. Hi, Sandra. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming to hang. Um, the envelopes are four cards that I've already made. Um, these ones are slimline specifically, and it's just I have my first market, or well, I have my first table at an event next week. And I needed envelopes for all the cards that I had made that I had not created envelopes for yet. So Slimline is one of the ones that I needed the most of. So currently I am making some Slimline. We're going to jump in. We're, this is the last one for this little set. Um, and then we're going to make some fun sized ones. But they're all for cards that already exist. Although you could just make them and then make like an envelope folder. I've done that. I did an envelope folder with uh, two five by seven envelopes. So that was pretty cool. Or you could put them in a journal. These ones specifically though are for cards that are already made. Yeah. How are you today, Sandra? Come, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming. How do you feel about sewing machines is how I feel about crickets and silhouettes. You know what, fair, but it, so Marcy, the problem was is that if I wanted to create, like draw and create my own stickers, I mean, I could, outsource but then you're paying way more money um, and what if the design doesn't sell or alternatively I could get a cutting machine and learn how to cut my own right so it just came down to um, it was easier to cut my own than to um, have them outsourced because if I don't sell a design like I can cut five of one design and if it doesn't sell that doesn't matter I don't have to buy like a hundred of a design to make it you know worthwhile so that's just kind of my, my thought, but okay. Tell me if I'm putting the cards in the right envelope. So this one was for the Navy one. As far as I recall, this one is the teacup, right? Cause it was the gray shiny one. If I'm pretty sure, um, white shiny. I'm pretty sure was the two. Wait, was the teal one for this? The teal one was for this one, not the other one. I think. <clears throat> I put this one in there, but it wasn't for that one. It was for this one. 
Okay, also, while I have this over here, let's add adhesive to it, because I didn't do that before. <clears throat> you can draw babies on them. Nah, daily lives are what I do in the shop anyway. I also have a new channel for crocheting. Well, John, that's pretty cool. What are you gonna crochet? I have a friend that uh, she crochets blankets, which is pretty neat. I tried to crochet uh, and then I got impatient. So I tried to sew once or not sew, sorry, uh, knit. I tried to knit once that didn't go very far. I'm, you don't see results fast enough with knitting. So I just kind of gave that up as a lost cause. Uh, um, Marcy makes sense. Yeah, I just, it was just way easier for me personally if I could out, like not have to outsource. So that was kind of the thought, right? Was that I didn't have to um, get someone else to make them. I can make them myself. And then I didn't have to worry about like, because when you order them, you have to order like a big amount, right? To make it cost effective. So, okay, there is that set of them. Now let's do these funny sized ones and then we'll jump back over to Slimline until we finish. Cause Slimline is what I need the majority of envelopes for. And all of these cards, well, thank you, Karen. Those cards are beautiful. You're always so sweet. Uh, all of these cards are on my channel somewhere. So, um, and if there's an odd card that isn't on my channel, it'll be on my design team channel. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these away. Give me one sec. I'm gonna have a sip of water and then we're gonna make those funny sized ones. Oh, you guys, we didn't even make very many. Oh, I'm gonna have to make so many <laughs> envelopes. Oh, that's okay, I have time. Oh, okay. Just needed a little bit of water. All right, so let's pick colors. We could use that purple one for this one maybe. So these are the funny sized ones. And I say funny, they're not, you know, they're not that funny sized but they aren't a standard size. Like they're not a slimline, they're not a, you know, A2, whatever. So they need a specialty envelope. So we're gonna use the one, two, three punch board for these. Um, so let's figure out some colors. I'm thinking maybe, you guys tell me what you think. We use this purple for the purple snowflakey one. I think that would be really pretty. So tell me your thoughts. And then, um, what should we use those? For those two. Um, I started our knitting and then found out the crochet was faster for me, so I switched. That's exactly what I did in Karen. That did as well, Karen. I uh, I took a class in knitting, so I learned how to knit. Well, a class. It was like a local workshop, and I learned how to knit. And I just it took forever to get any progress. And I just. I'm not the most patient of gaffers when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I, I got impatient and yeah, I, um, I had to do something else. All right. What do we think about the purple? Yes. Purple. Yes. Okay. Karen says, yes, we're going with purple. All right. For this kind of dark ready one, I'm almost thinking this funky brown paper would be cool. This is a card I made in fall and I, I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. I don't know if the camera picks out how cool this cardstock is. That's pretty neat, you let me know. Uh, John, you guys have my cards on display? Well, that's sweet, thank you. Is uh, Auntie Donna sending them to you? She sends them to my parents all the time. It's, it's super adorable, I love it. I'll go over there and they'll have a card from Auntie that I've made. It's just so cute. Uh, brown looks good, Peggy, okay. Peggy called it, where well, that one's good. Uh, and then we have this rainbow one, which always a little, you're not feeling the brown, it's too dark. Hmm, okay. Really, because the pine cones are dark. This is almost, it's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's brown when it lays down, but it's got this like gold shimmer in it. Uh, it's one of those things that it just isn't, you can't really see it. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll see if we can find something else. We might go brown anyway, though. And then the rainbow card is always a little hard. I can go white again, because we did that for the other rainbow cards. So this sparkly white is an option. Um, or I have cream, uh, or we pick a color. Although I am kind of leaning towards the white just because it's got a white border and the, the bodies of the butterflies are white. It almost looks copper. That's what I mean, like it's, it's such a cool color. I don't know what I would use instead though. 
orange. You like the orange for this card, Peggy? You let me know. Are you talking orange for the roundy one or orange for the fall one? Because we could do. I mean, we could do the orange for that if we wanted to. And if you guys don't want, well, I don't know what we would do instead. These are just a few, these are just shimmery colors. I have a lot more cardstock in this. Um, I mean, we could try, ooh, what if we tried this purpley one with it? Cause it's got a purpley background. Thoughts? I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. Yes, round favorite color is orange. <laughs> we can do orange with it, yeah. Or with the purpley one. I almost kind of like this almost dark purple for the envelope for this. Orange for the rainbow. You think white for the butterfly. For the, the brown one, Brooklyn? Is that what you're talking about? I need to order some custom thank you cards for my customers. About 12 dozen interested. Are you being serious, John? Are you messing with me? John's a family member, just so you guys know. <laughs> Uh, that's why my auntie sends us cards. Um, are you, are you actually being serious, John? 12 dozen? Depends on what you want. Cause if you wanted like 12 dozen individual cards, that would take me 60 years. Like individual designs. I mean, if you want one design recreated several times, that might be able to do. Um, I like the brown. Go white for the butterfly card. Orange for the fall one. Uh, orange for the rainbow. <laughs> I think white for the butterfly. I have a, we have a winner. Yes, the purple and the orange. Okay, so what do you guys think about these? These are our color card stocks. Is everybody good with these ones? And we'll do these custom sized ones. Thoughts, thoughts? Get your votes in. <clears throat> I appreciate that, John. Thank you. I mean, send me a message. We'll, we'll chat about it and figure out what, you, what you're thinking. All right, we're going these. Sold. All right, so with this one, we actually have to do this a little bit differently than the slimline one because we have to measure them out. So we're gonna use the one, two, three punch because it gives you individual measurements, whereas the slimline is literally just slimline. So let's do the square one first just because it's a little bit smaller. Or do you want like a graphic design? John, you have to let me know. Because I also went to school for graphic design. So if you just want like one you can print, that's also an option. All right, so this card is, I believe, five by five, but let's double check that. See, it's just like a smidge over five. Oh, but then it's a smidge under five. Of course it is. See, that way it's a smidge under five. Although that could just be because that's thick there. I'm gonna say this card is five by five. I'm pretty much positive that's what I made it. The fall fox one. It's pretty, hey? I uh, I made it like a while ago. Uh, two years, three years. But I never put a sentiment on it, so I never did anything with it. But it, uh, yeah, it's really pretty. Okay, so five by five, we go to our trusty punch board. And all the measurements are right here. So you can see five by five. So we need a piece of cardstock that's eight and three eighths and we're gonna punch at four and one eighth. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So we need to cut our card to stock it down to eight and three eighths. Inches, this is all in inches of course, cause you know, I'm Canadian, we do inches. All right, so eight and three eighths, oh, let's pull the legs out. And three eighths is just over a quarter. Let's go this way first, just so I want to cut that bottom border off. Uh, it was eight and three eighths, right? Double check your measurements. You only have to cut once, because <laughs> I'm like, I'll forget. Yeah, eight and three eighths. Okay. <clears throat> just want to make sure. So eight and three eighths. And then it's a square, so obviously it has to be eight and three eighths twice. I'm gonna cut this wrong. I'm always like, double check. Okay. 
Watch me have made that the wrong size. Wouldn't that suck? So I only have one piece of that cardstock. Okay. So eight and three eighths. And then we punch at, what did I say? Three, or sorry, four and one eighths. Yeah, four and one eighths. So four and one eighth is right there. Oh, I should have, well, actually I'm okay. So I was gonna say I should have put the arm out, but see, this is actually small enough that I don't need the arm. And hopefully that's not crazy loud. I'm sorry, it's because it's on the glass mat, so it kind of like reverberates a bit. And then I am gonna round the corners. Cause I like that look, you don't have to, but I like the look, so I'm going to. And then this one we shouldn't have to alter because it's not like the slimline one I showed you earlier. And I'm so sorry if this is loud. Hopefully it's not super loud. There, so we round all the corners and now we just fold this bad boy. Fold it over. And then I guess you pick whatever you want the top and the bottom to be, because this is a square, right? So it's gonna be the same size. And then I would just double check that it does fit because it's giving you, because when you look at it on the board, you're picking the size of your card, not the size of your envelope. Hopefully that makes sense. So because the card was just like a smidge bigger than five by five, one side was like five and a, like one eighth, and the other side was five, the envelope is going to be bigger than that, right? To a, count for that so then now we're just going to adhere it but th that's your envelope so that's why I have two bunch boards because they're both fabulous for different things so I do like to put my flaps under you could put them over if you like that look better I feel like that looks a little messier so I don't do that but you can and it's a square so it doesn't matter what flap you do and I'm probably going to put it I kind of like to <laughs> put it on the bottom flap yeah, so that's how simple that one was. And then the other two are kind of a funny size. So we'll have to look at that. So, everybody still doing okay? Any questions, any thoughts? Did everybody leave? Nobody's there no more, it's just me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> what do you guys wanna do for the next live? Thoughts? Um, I'm thinking, I don't actually know. Maybe we could make a cart. You'll have to let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> Just watching. Well, good. Thank you, Peggy. I'm still here. Cards would be great. Okay, Karen. We could, we could absolutely make a card. Uh, I don't know what kind of card, but what do you guys want to do together? Like, is there anything you're struggling with that you'd like to do together? Like we could do ink blending together if that's something somebody like anybody's struggling with. And these are going to overlap. So I don't mind having them like just lightly adhere on the top. And then of course I bring the bottom and adhere it. So then there's the envelope. So that one is done for that little fancy guy. So yeah, is there a technique that um, you might want to do together that I can kind of walk you through or what are your thoughts? Or do you just want to make a card together? or ink blending. Yeah, Peggy, we could do ink blending. Absolutely. We kind of walk through ink blending, ink blending. Okay, well, let's do an ink blending card on the next live. Sounds good. I'll put up like a community thing to see if you guys like have a specific color blend you want to learn. Actually, it doesn't, the technique is the same, regardless of what colors we actually do. Um, the, like it's the same, right? So, I mean, you could do them in literally anything. Do you have Tim Holtz embossing glaze. I do. I do. I only have a few colors, um, but I do have some of his embossing glaze. There we go. That is that one. And that is really cute. So then we're going to do these. So I'll put that over there. Let's do the orange one next. And then we'll finish on the purple one and then we'll jump back to some more sun lines. So this bad boy is, I believe this one's like six by six. Actually, it's like five and a half by five and a half, but let's double check that. 
I would love to see you use those. Okay. Embossing glazes. We can definitely do that. Oh, this says it's over five and a half. Actually, no, that's probably right. I think it's five and a half by five and a half. Yeah, it is. Okay. So. Get out our trusty. Do you have the full set of oxides? I do. <laughs> I sure do, Cherry. Uh, all the oxides. I actually have all the inks, too. I just have them in minis instead. Ink blending sounds cool. Okay, Brooklyn. Okay, well, definitely. We'll do the uh, ink blending, and then we'll see if we can work in some embossing glaze to the same card and do some techniques together. So let's do a card that is five and a half by five and a half. So we need, so, oh, sorry. You guys can't see that. So here it is right here, five and a half by five and a half. So we need nine and one eighths, and we're going to score, or sorry, we're going to like punch at four and a half. So a nine and one eighths. and one eighth which is under a quarter so it's right there do you like the oxides cherry they do you guys have a what's your favorite ink tell me that do you have like do you like the distress ones do you prefer a different brand let me know. I mean, I, you guys know, if you've been with my channel, I love Tim Holtz stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of his inks, especially. And what did I say we're scoring at? Distress oxides. Yes. I love the oxides. I'm with you, Karen. Uh, I think we said four and something, didn't I? Four and a half. Yep. Okay. Now this one's a bigger cardstock, so I would need the arm for it. <clears throat> so four and a half is right there. Right, double check. Four and a half, yep. Okay, that was not stretched out all the way. There we go. Do you use the inks, Peggy, or this the oxides? Yeah, I Tim Holtz, he could sell ice to an Eskimo, that gent. Like he is just what a cool dude. He just comes up with the coolest design ideas. So then I gotta buy all this stuff. Uh... So obviously this is gonna be square, right? Just like the last one, it's just that the card happens to be a circle. But whatever I pick up, that's fair. All right, and I am going to round the corners again just because I prefer that look. You don't have to. You could leave them square. Tim Holtz inks are easy to get in the UK, Cherry. Perfect. You got to meet him, Karen. Oh, man. That would be Was he as cool in person as I think he'd be? He seems like he'd be a cool guy, in, like a nice person in, like, in person. <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes people, you know, they aren't. They don't seem as nice. Uh, he always seems like he'd be a really nice gent. Okay. So there you go. So that, like, this is how quick and easy they are. And here, like, it's... Like, it's so perfect. He made a tag. Oh, Karen, that's cool. I'd love to see a picture if you want to share that with me. <clears throat> I bet you it's brown. <laughs> he does have a preference for brown. I have to admit that I am really glad that he kind of, like, I know he started his line with, like, six browns. I'm really glad that he, he added other colors. I'm just not a person who, I just, I don't have the right appreciation for the color brown. It's just not my thing. <laughs> like, I'd love to see it, Karen, if you want to share it with me. That would be phenomenal. I just, I don't know. Brown is just not my jam. I like, as you guys can tell from all the rainbow cards, I love vibrant colors. Like I just, they just make me happy. So browns are just <laughs> not my jam. I mean, there's nothing wrong with brown. It has its place. It's just, I, you know what? I, brown and pink is cool. 
I do like that. But I don't like brown by itself. It's just not my jam. Okay, I like brown by itself when Tim Holtz does it. Then I do. But like if I do it, it just always looks odd to me. Like I'm always like, what, what were you doing there? Like, what? All right. Oh, hey now, don't stick to my finger. Stop that. There we go. Okay. There we go. Just make sure you don't catch a wing. Whoop, don't catch a wing. There we go. There. Just like that. Quick and simple. Where do you get your vintage photos from, Karen? Do you, like, are they pictures you've taken or do you, like, buy um, stuff off, like, Etsy or something? Or one of the, the journaling people's stuff? I don't, <laughs> I got my patty slapped for calling my style of journaling junk journaling. <laughs> the art police are <laughs> running around out here. Um, apparently my style is vastly too pretty to be considered junky. So I, <laughs> I got my patty slapped for uh, calling my stuff junk journaling. So now I just call it journaling. I actually haven't made a, a journal spread recently, but... But yeah, I, I kind of, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> well, again, so we got one more funny one. And then actually we're going to make some mini slimline cards because we haven't made any of those yet. So you guys have seen me make a bunch of slimline ones. Let's make some mini slimline ones because we has not done that yet. Oh, very cool. So they're actual like photos from people you know or, or you know of. That's really neat, Karen. All right. So I believe this one is six by six. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty much positive it is because I'm pretty much positive that's the size of the snowflake. Is this ruler is six inches. Yeah, this is a six by six. So we're going to aim for six by six. What junk journaling can be pretty. Absolutely it can, Peggy. I, I don't feel the need to tell people what their crafting style is, but people in general feel the need to tell other people things like that. And uh, yeah, I was, I was on the receiving end of that. I am. Um, and I don't use enough junk. <laughs> and it, junk is so objective, right? But I guess I don't use enough junk in my creating, so it's not a junk journal. So we're going to do a six by six card, which is nine and three quarters with a punch of four and seven eighths. <clears throat> Excuse me. So nine and three quarters. Hey, we're back to Harry Potter. Woohoo. All right. Nine and three quarters. Let me just double check my measurements. Because again, check your measurements more than once and then you only have to cut once. Nine and three quarters. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cat hair. Get off my paper. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oops. I just smacked you guys with a leg of my trimmer there. Hopefully I put you back where you're supposed to be. Let me just fix you here. There we go. I think I fixed you. Let me know if you're not <laughs> you're cockeyed now. But I think you're okay. I think I got you back where you're supposed to be. All right. So what did I say? Four and seven eighths. So this is a bigger card. It needs the arm. Four and seven eighths. Whoop. Okay. And on the punch, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but you can. It actually has all the eighths as well. So it'll be like two, two and an eighth, two and a quarter, two and three eighths, two and a half. Like it gives you all the the measurements to an eighth. So if you're like someone who's not comfortable with inches, it has those marks on there. So. So you don't have to really guesstimate. They're there to make sure that you can kind of get get your your feel on there with the right measurements. This is probably the only time I pay attention to measurements pretty strictly, just because I don't I don't want my envelope not to fit my card because I hate to waste pretty cardstock. All right. Okay, there we go. But yeah, that's how quick and easy it is to make envelopes. I mean, it's faster if you're not chatting like I am, but is thinner paper easier for making envelopes? Uh, that really depends on you, 
Peggy. Um, I, I don't like thin paper in general unless I'm layering it. So, I mean, that's kind of a personal preference, I think. Um, this paper is basil. Let me see if it tells me the weight. Uh, it doesn't tell me the weight. I th think it's a hundred pound, but I could be wrong, but it's really personal preference. So for me personally, um, I don't like thin papers just because I mail a lot of my stuff when I mail it, like when I use my envelopes to mail, I mail a lot of it like internationally because a lot of my pen pals are like American or some of them are in like the UK or, and I want to make sure it gets to them. So I really don't want it to be flimsy. So that's kind of my, my personal preference, but I mean, it's completely personal, really. Um, it's what your preference is and what you have on hand. Like I, I'm using cardstock. I have on hand. actually the sparkly stuff I, I purchased to do some fun envelopes, but like I have a tub of cardstock that was given to me and I'm just slowly working through it. But there you go. So this is slightly big, which is perfect because I have a dimensional flower. I have like this dimensional poinsettia on the, the thing. So I don't have to worry about the fact that it's not going to fit. So, but yeah, completely experiment. See what you like, because it's really going to be your personal preference. I wouldn't, I personally don't use much under a hundred pounds. Just because I, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like worrying about stuff not getting there. However, when I do like some of my pen pal pockets that have like, 60 things inside of them. Sometimes you maybe want a thinner envelope so it doesn't cost you $60 in shipping. <laughs> so maybe, maybe you do want a thinner, a thinner envelope, but personally I prefer it. Uh, but I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little bit of a paper snob that way. Cause I don't like, like if I stand my card up, I don't want my card to slouch and fall down. So I tend to use a heavyweight cardstock. Like my base cardstock, I think is 110 or 120 pounds. Because to me, I don't know if this one will stand up because it's, well, no, it should. Oh, well, it's not going to stand up with my glass mat. But, like, my cards, well, there you go, that'll work. My cards stand up. I don't know what 100 libs is in GSM. I'm sorry, Cherry, I don't know what GSM, I don't, I don't know the conversion for that. Because, um, of course, we're, we're pounds here. Um, but I'm pretty, like, I'm, I like heavyweight cardstock, personally. Not that this is heavyweightness as well. I guess 100 pounds would be. But yeah, like my cards, they all stand up and don't fall down. I mean, I guess if you left it there for six years, it might fall down. But I've, I've received cards. And not that anybody else needs to, like, whatever, that's fine. But I've received cards that I've wanted to display. And they, like, they kind of, like, like, they'll, like, whoop, like, like that. And then they're kind of, like, just laying down. So, but I'm personal preference. Um, I just, I like heavyweight card stuff. What's GSM? It's a, a, what Europeans, I believe, use for uh, their weight. So we use pounds. They use GSM. I don't know what GSM stands for. Um, it's like, I, yeah, I don't know what GSM stands for. But I do know that that's a, a paper measurement in um, Europe. Like the weight. It's a measurement of weight. I just, I don't know how to convert it because I've never tried. I'm sure there's a Google grams per square meter yeah that makes sense but uh yeah I don't I don't know how to convert I don't know how to convert that for you I'm sorry but there yeah there you go so there's the kind of funny ones all like and that's how quick and easy it is I mean though I did three envelopes really quickly and they're all different sizes right so so yeah that's those ones. So then let's jump over to some mini slim lines. So you, if you weren't here in the beginning, um, you can use the slim line punch for mini slim lines. Um, there is measurements on it, but I like to make my mini slim lines slightly smaller than what the punch board likes to have you doing. So I'll show you here in two seconds what the difference is. Let me just put some adhesive here. There we go. All right. So yeah, the, uh, the Slimline punch board will give you measurements for a mini Slimline card. So uh, mini Slimline, my mini Slimlines are six by six cardstock scored at three inch. So they're three by six. That is how I make my Slimline cards. 
um, they are saying that you should be making, so their measurements are seven by six. So it's three and a half by six inches. So theirs is half an inch. Well, it's a full inch bigger, but it's it once scored, it's half an inch bigger. So you can make that size if you want to, because the, the scoreboard has this line to score bases. So the scoreboard actually lets you make envelopes and bases for slim lines. So like they're saying the standard slim line size would be seven by eight and a half scored at the three and a half mark, which is what size I do. And then they're saying the mini slim line would be seven inches by six inches. So when scored would be three and a half by six inches. I don't make mine that size. So that's kind of a personal preference. Uh, I can show you though. So this is my box of slim line cards, mini slim line cards, sorry. This is the box that I have. And so generally when I make slim line cards, I make them like, like this. This is six by six, so it's three by six. So it's three inches by six inches. And then this is what the envelope size is. So this, this envelope was made on this punch board. And I made this slimline card to that size just to see, because I wanted to see, you know, kind of how, how different it was. And so there's just that half an inch on both sides. But so I don't, I don't like this envelope for my normal mini slimline card because you can see how much you'd have extra. Like it's fine this way, but it has a lot extra because it has that half an inch. So I don't like to make my slimline cards with the slimline punch board. You can, absolutely, as I've done here, right? But I, I don't, <laughs> just because I don't make my mini slimline cards that size. Um, but if you like that extra, like that three and a half by six, then this would be perfect. So I tend to make them smaller. So let's just grab a handful of these bad boys and we're going to make some mini slimline cards. <clears throat> the biggest problem is picking colors. So far, that's been like the biggest struggle <laughs> of this whole experiment. <laughs> so of course, like I said, for this, so I like to use the one, two, three punch board instead of the slimline because you're just making a card that's three by six inches, right? Which, or sorry, an envelope. So in here, if you go down, three by six is... Uh, paper that's seven and five eighths and you're going to punch at two and three quarters. So now we just have to pick some colors, which has been the hardest part of this whole shebang. So I'll show you the cards and let's figure out some colors we can, we can do for them. There's actually some craft ones in this, this set. <clears throat> I don't do craft a lot. There you go. We have a kind of a good mix of stuff here. This actually may be pretty with this brown. I don't know. You guys give me your thoughts. Exactly. If you like to use pattern paper, Karen, the six by six is perfect because you get two panels from it, right? Like I, I am terrible with pattern paper. I seem to collect it instead of use it. So I don't know. I'm really bad that way, but so I don't know, I kind of am feeling this, this brownie, brownie color for this kind of fall themed one. So let me know, but this is a pattern paper that I used my deco edge trimmer on to give it like a kind of a funky edge. So I thought that looked pretty cool. I'm leaning towards the brown. You guys tell me if you like it or don't like it. Give me your thoughts. Hello, Linda, how are you? Thanks for coming and hanging. We're working on some mini slimline card envelopes at the moment. We're gonna make these six, seven, I guess I pulled seven. And then I'm, uh, I think I'm going to be done for the day. I like the brown. Right, Marcy? I just think it's pretty. I don't know. That's what I'm leaning towards. You guys can tell me. And then I have this really pretty pink one that we could maybe use for this. I think, I think. So let's go there. And then we kind of have some different ones here. So we could go white, maybe. I do like a good white envelope. So maybe we'll go white for that guy. And then we kind of have, this cream might be cool with one of these craft ones. Cause it's kind of a dark cream. I'm just picking cards, the papers. If you guys don't like one, tell me and we can change it out. I don't think I want that dark pink. I don't want blue. These are just the fun, funky colored ones that I have on hand. Cause I thought they'd be fun to use. This is more of a purple than a pink. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, this green one might be kind of cool with one of these, um, one of these guys. Maybe, well, it's kind of like the cream with the craft. Yeah, I'm gonna go cream with craft, I think. I think that would be really pretty. 
Um, I don't know if I like the green with these. I mean, I could do green with them. Tell me your thoughts. Maybe. I have, a, I have enough here to do both of them with the same envelope color. Not blue. We're not doing any blue cards at the moment. That, uh, it's too purple. Blue. And then we're back to like a white and cream again. I don't like the green. Okay, so no green. All right, fair. Um, what do we think here? Okay. What color do you think would go well with these? I mean, maybe I could find a pale yellow that might look nice. Let's see. Because we did have a couple of different yellowy ones. Let's see if I have kind of a pale yellow. I don't have a lot of yellow. That's the problem. Like I was saying to you guys earlier, I, uh, my yellow is my favorite color, my mom's favorite color. So when I make her cards, she usually gets a yellow envelope and I just, I have not okay, restocked the yellow. So I don't have a lot of yellow on hand, but let's see what we can do. And then I don't want like neon yellow. Oh, well, what do we think of this yellow? Yes, no. I mean, the oxide, it's oxide ink and it's on craft. So it really muted the color. This is, I believe, squeezed lemonade, but it really muted. You can try blue with the sunflowers. You think? Okay, well, let's see. I had a kind of fun blue with the shimmery cardstocks. Um, not the super bright one. You like the yellow? Okay, we'll use the yellow as a backup if we don't like the blue. I feel like this blue is too, too blue too vibrant but did I have a paley blue I have a paley I only have one paley blue but there's kind of a pale blue thoughts or do we like that yellow better hi shadow what shadow do we like the kind of paley blue or do we want to go more of like a, a, a light yellow as I have this yellow we could do you like the yellow better okay Oh, Karen likes the blue? Uh-oh. Because we could do something like that. Yellow? Okay. We're going yellow, I think. So then we're just going to pick a shade of yellow, and then I'm going to see if I can find two, because I just, we might as well make the match, because why not? Um, oh, no, this one's slightly different. So we have a slightly darker and a slightly lighter, which we could use both either. Do one of each, blue and yellow. Do we like these two shades of yellow or thoughts? I mean, obviously you wouldn't see them together, right? So, I mean, right now you can tell that there's like a pretty big difference. And then I also need to find something pinkish for the other card. I have this kind of cool mauve color, but I don't really think that's gonna fit. No. Okay, I vote we do the two yellows and then we need to find something for the pink card. I'm just digging through a, a bucket of paper I have here. A bucket, it's like a bin. Um, let's find a light pink maybe. I cut a flower out of that one. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Oh, I cut a flower out of that one too. Oh, I was gonna say that would work, but I cut a flower out of it. That would have been kind of pretty, but that's not gonna work. Linda, you're voting yellow? Okay, we're going yellow guys. Sounds good to me. Let's find a pink. Um, that's more peach. Hmm. Let's see. I don't have a lot of pink because I, I use a lot of pink. Well, how about this one? Actually, that might be pretty. What about this paley pink for that card? Thoughts? Or alternatively, I also have that. Well, oh no. Uh, no, I don't like that. I'm voting that pink, I think. What do you guys think for this one? Peggy gave me a thumbs up. All right, Peggy, thumbs up. I, th I like it because it's really close to the sponge sugar. So I'm going that. I think it's good. All right. Let's cut our cardstocks down. Okay, what did I tell you the measurements were? See, this is the problem. Like a memory like a sieve. All right, uh, what are we doing? Three by six. So the cardstock needs to be cut to seven and five eighths. And let's not hit the camera this time. How are you today, Linda? 
Thanks for coming and hanging with us. You having a good day? Karen, you're back. Aw, well, yeah, it might be dinner time there. Karen, what time is it? Where you are. Oh, Brooklyn, you're heading to bed? Good night. Thanks for hanging, my friend. We'll have to have a chat about stickers if you have time. I'd love to pick your brain if you don't mind. We can kind of have a chat. So let's do seven and five eighths. Double check my measurement. 8.30. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's fair for her. It's only 5.30 here for me. Not dinner time for my ketans. Not that they wouldn't happily eat if I'd let them. But 7 and 5 eighths is right there. Seven and five eighths. All right. I'm doing good today. It started raining here in Los Angeles. Ooh, I, I like rain, so that sounds lovely, but if you don't enjoy the rain, well, then that kind of sucks. I, uh, I will take it as long as it's not snowing. Because, <laughs> of course, I'm Canadian, so snow is, you know. We just hit spring, so snow is a pretty serious thing here. Awesome, Brooklyn. That's that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Karen, are you talking to me out loud? Oh, I love it. That's awesome. I'm sorry I can't hear you. <laughs> but I love that you're talking to me. I love that so much. That's so cool. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of just assembly line make these because everyone's the same, right? So just to do it a little bit quicker, I'm going to assembly line make it. So yeah, sadly, Karen, I can't hear you, but I do appreciate that you want to talk to me. That's lovely. Okay, so this one, I got to be careful here because I have their stems cut out. So let's make sure we don't try to put that in the card design, although that might be neat if you were intentionally doing it to have like little punch outs in your card envelope. That is one thing about making your own envelope that it does free up that you could, you could like punch designs into a card, an envelope with a card. Like that would be kind of neat. We should experiment with that maybe in a different, different live, not this one. Sadly, we don't, <laughs> we gotta make envelopes guys. I gotta have these cards going on. I only have six days to get my ducks in a row. Get my poop in a group. I just think that saying is hilarious. All right. I don't know what time it is in Newfoundland. Eastern's three, it must be three hours ahead of me. I have never made my own vellum envelope because I find that vellum doesn't like to score. But I bought some envelopes made out of vellum from Michael's the other day because they were on super sale and I can show you I actually got them to put them in journals was the, the thought when I bought them I've never actually used one to send to somebody just because I'm not sure what would happen and I have a heck of a time with stuff getting refused at the border like well you'd know I've tried to send you that same parcel three times now did you I don't even know if you've gotten it yet probably not because I'm sure you'd have told me Newfoundland, 7 There you go. Oh, 10.07? It's four and a half hours ahead? Wow, I did not know that. Thank you for looking that up for me. Much appreciated. But yeah, Karen, I, uh, I, um, where are they? Right here. I don't know if you guys can see me when I stand at my, my singer here. Do you want to say hi, little pea? Oh, here's a special pea. She, like, hates it when I pick her up so this is gonna be funny but hi do you want to say hi oh I'd say hi to all those lovely people hello she doesn't like to be picked up very much so I, do, I try not to pick her up but I don't know excuse me I don't know what weight these are because it doesn't actually say what weight they are and they're just like the Michaels brand 
but um, they're vellum envelopes. But I I bought them to put into a journal. Like that was the reason I got them. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually tried yet, so that's on the list of things to do. But I've never I've found that vinyl or vinyl um, vellum doesn't score nicely for me, so I haven't. <laughs> Bye, sweet pea. I haven't um, actually tried to make an envelope myself. But you absolutely could. I just, I haven't. All right. But that is ember. Ember as in fire, not M amber as in person. Because I always see when she actually shows up in the videos, people are like, hi, Amber. And I'm like, oh, her name's Amber, but that's cute. <laughs> uh, you did receive it. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. That's so good. Really glad to see that. No, I didn't see it posted, um, but that's, that doesn't matter to me. I'm just really glad you, you got it because that was a nightmare because the, your, the American border kept kicking it back. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Cherry. Thank you, Karen. Peggy, uh, as Arizona, am I the same time zone as Arizona? I don't know the American time zones very well. Um, I know that I'm Pacific Standard Time. But, uh, yeah, she is, she is beautiful and she has the attitude of an orange cat. She's my first orange cat. My husband picked her out of a, a rescue litter we had. So her and Shade are siblings, they're brother and sister. And then Mist and Shadow are siblings, uh, they're sisters and they're, yeah. So she, she is a saucy cat, that little orange cat of ours. She's, Wow. The cat cameos were what I first subscribed to your channel for. I don't blame you, Cherry. The cats are here a lot. Um, we don't, I don't know, some people don't like cats to get on things. I don't discourage them because I don't really care, but it upsets some people. I don't know. I just, I love cats. Two and three fourths. So we're going to punch at two and three quotas. All right. Two and three quarters. Do I need the arm? Oh, I do need the arm. <clears throat> It's 5.38 and we never change our time. Okay, so we do change our time, which is irritating. Um, we change our time. <clears throat> so obviously we match half of the year. And like they promised to go, oh, now my shirt's covered in cat hair. Well, that's pretty normal. Uh, they promised to get rid of that and they did not. So we do a time change twice a year. What did I say? Two and three quarters, right? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, no, I didn't open it all the way. There we go. Ember is now digging through my pile of cardstock. Do you want to come back up and say hi again? Of your own volition? Eh? I'm sorry if the punching is super loud. It's just the glass. It kind of echoes. So sorry. I hope that's not irritating. Please don't steal that. So now you've seen what three? Oh no, you haven't seen mist in this one. Well, you saw the drawing of mist though. So it's kind of like seeing mist. She's sleeping under my feet. So you've seen two out of four cats today and a drawing of mist. So that's pretty good actually. If you like cats, <laughs> that's really good. If you don't like cats, I don't know why you'd be on my channel. Well, you could like crafting and not like cats. That's, I don't know how anybody doesn't like cats, but you know, whatever. Takes all kinds. Uh, what did I say? What am I doing? Two and three quarters. Ooh. If you don't punch at the right spot, you're, it's not going to make an envelope. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, she is beautiful. She's got so much tube, though. Uh... I love the cameos. Yeah, I could do without the time change. Just pick one. Oh, I used to, I used to work graveyards when I was in the seniors home. And, um, it was just, cause then you were doing a 13 hour shift instead of a 12 or a nine instead of a 10 or eight, depending on what, what job I was in at the time. And, uh, like it's just 13 hours. is just, it's unnecessary in my opinion. 
Peggy, you're allergic to cats? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That would be heartbreaking. I love cats so much. Well, you're welcome to just enjoy mine through the, the screen. Because mine are here all the time. Up until very recently, they were all in this room. That corner did not round nicely. There we go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy seeing them. Because, yeah, they are, they are in my videos a lot. But I just, I don't know. I'm a big fan of cats, which I'm sure you guys know, because I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. Okay, what? Hit the notch, hit the notch. Uh, there it is. What are you guys all doing while you're watching me? Are you crafting something? Or are you just chilling there watching? Or what are you doing? Just hanging out? I like to, uh, I like to watch videos when I craft. Uh, and I've started watching them when I draw too, actually. Because um, it gives me something, I kind of need like the, the background noise almost. What do you like to use the vellum envelopes for, Karen? I didn't even, I didn't ask. Um, do you have a preference? What do you use them for? A Hallmark movie. Which Hallmark movie? Hallmark movies are always so wholesome. They're just so cute. Because <clears throat> I actually specifically bought those vellum envelopes to put in journals. And I also bought... Um, some vellum cardstock for journals as well, like a thin weight one, because the one I usually use on cards is a really heavyweight one, because I like to like emboss on it and stuff, right? So I bought a thin, a really thin weight one, so that I could uh, use it as pages in journals and not have it be like the one that I have is that I usually use is like 110 pounds, I think. Ah, Marcy, you're stocking up on pet sympathy cards. Oh. That makes me sad and happy at the same time. Because I'm happy that you're going to send them out to people. As a person who received one of your pet sympathy cards when Ty passed, uh, that was lovely. Um, but I'm sad that you have to make them because that means people are losing their pets. I, uh, a friend of mine who watched the last live, Marcy, she uh, asked me after the live was done if I could show her the card that you had made that's with Ty's ashes. So I went and showed it to her and she uh, she loved it. So I thought that was really, really sweet. Oh, that didn't touch well. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, I showed her, I sent her a picture of the card that you had made. Because it is quite pretty and sad. It's one of those things, right? Like, oh, I've never made a pet sympathy card. I don't know if I, oh. I'd probably cry while I made it. The idea of losing your animals just heartbreaking. I mean, it's hard to lose anybody you love, regardless of animal or family member. It doesn't matter. Same thing, really. But well, I'm I'm happy and sad that you're making those cards, Marcy. Oh, I don't even. Oh. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, losing anybody you love is just horrible. Part of life, but horrible. I've sat by a, many a person as they were passing, and it's just, just sad. All right, a couple more, and then we'll start making them. So I'm just assembly lining this. Obviously, if you're only making one, you wouldn't need to do this many at a time. But as I'm trying to make many an envelope... 
Oh, my nose is going to try to whip. Give me one sec. I'm just going to grab a, a Kleenex. I'm not going to actually blow my nose in your guys' ear, though. That's kind of rude. I just would like to not be on camera with a dwippy nose. <clears throat> there we go. Have a sip of my water. blinds <clears throat> wait <laughs> is it three eighths or seven eighths or sorry three quarters or seven eighths i just had a brain fart three quarter okay hopefully i've been punching at that rate same one it's two and right two and three quarters yes hopefully i've been punching there the whole time because i was talking to you guys and not paying attention <laughs> peggy need to leave phone is out of juice oh no well thank you for hanging out peggy much appreciated you have a great day we'll see you next time hopefully i probably be in about two weeks i think we're gonna make a card we're gonna do some ink blending that seemed to be something you guys really wanted to, to focus on so let's do that but you have a wonderful day and i will see you again next time hello i don't know if you're gonna well you should be able to see her now Please don't rub on that. Nobody wants to see it jiggle around. All right. Bradzilla, can you not? Small and orange. Hello. No, we don't need to rub on that. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's like an earthquake. Amber has decided that she needs to rub on the phone stand. Okay, sweet Pete, come on. I love you to pieces, but you need to not. Why don't you sit up here? You like to sit up there. Quality control has arrived of the feisty variety. Hopefully she'll just chill on the back of the chair so we can get these last couple of envelopes ready. I think we did okay. I mean, we made what? Uh, seven sm mini slimline envelopes and three weird sized envelopes and I don't know how many slimline ones we ended up doing. Probably about six or seven, somewhere in there. So that's not bad. We're getting somewhere. I still have a lot more to make, but luckily I am, I'm just gonna buy A2 and five by seven. Cause it's just, uh, there's no way I could make enough envelopes for the A2 cards that I've made. I have two, two boxes full of uh, A2 cards. Uh, and I just, I ain't got no time to make enough envelopes for those. Oh. oh, that punch sounded weird, but that's okay. All right, okay. How old are my cats? Um, Mist and Shadow are five in September, which means Ember and Shade are, I believe, th no, that can't be right. Hold on. See, now if Christopher was here, he could tell you. Um, we got Ember and Shade right before we got married, and they had just been born. So I want to say we've been married five years in September. So the babies will be five. So Ember and Shade will be five, which means... Mist and shadow have to be about seven, I guess. Is that... If Christopher's still in here, he can... Oh, here you go. He just... <laughs> That's my husband. Uh, so Ember and Shade are five in September, and that means that shadow and mist have to be seven. Yeah, there you go. My husband just answered you guys. <clears throat> or answered you, Karen. <clears throat> Ish. <laughs> well, I think that it was September for them too, wasn't it, love? I think. I think pretty sure okay so the only thing with this again is that <laughs> it is a just a smidge too long which is the same problem with making the slimline cards with the one two three punch so if you don't like that look you can use the slimline board and then it'll make it a little bit more of an elegant envelope but I don't like how big it is so I make mine this way and then I just trim it. 
So it's not as pretty. There is that. But I prefer this method. So completely up to you. If, if you want to have two punch boards. I mean, you can make all the envelopes on this, the one, two, three punch. It's just that you will have to trim this a little bit. Which doesn't really bother me. So I don't mind trimming it. <clears throat> I don't know. It's almost time to get more kitchens, maybe. Could you fold the corner under instead of cutting it? You absolutely can. But because a lot of my cards have stuff hanging off of them, um, it would catch. So you can fold them under. Yes. And I can show you that look if you want to see it. The only thing, again, is like I said, um, because a lot of, like I tend to add a lot of dimension. So trying to slide like this in with that, I would be worried it would try to catch and rip it off. So, I mean, if you had a card like this card has no dimension. So this, why well, it, it has as much dimension as some layers, but it doesn't have like, because that. So let's do that and see what you think of that look. Because the problem is you have to do it on the top and the bottom, right? Because both flaps will hang over. But like you can, like it, you don't have to cut it, right? So if we just... But it kind of gives you that same look, right? So like it's still, like it's still gonna give you the same look of the envelope. So that's why I just cut it off. <clears throat> but if you would rather not, you know what? I should just play with the mini slimline card, the mini, um, and see if I can figure out a way to make the size of slimline card that I like. So this is the problem. Like here, you could again, you can fold it over, but. Like it still gives you the same look and then you just have extra bulk, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I just, I just cut them off. Um, but it's just, it's not as pretty, right? Like the envelope is just not as elegant as this mini slimline or the slimline board one. When you make this size of card, it's great when you make pretty much every other size. But so I just, I just trim them. <clears throat> Yeah, I try really hard not to have extra bulk because I tend to use a heavyweight cardstock to start with. I try not to add bulk to it because then I just, it's, and, and a lot of my cards have, like, this has dimension to it. So if you're trying to, like, I don't want to grab things. Right? So you can fold it under, but, I mean, it looks the same, so... Uh, I haven't figured out a way I should if I sit down and play with my mini slimline board I could probably figure out the dimensions I would need to um, make it so that wasn't there but but there's not much I can do with the, what their measurements are because I don't make my slimline cards in that size and I haven't, but again, see, that's the problem. I haven't had anybody complain about the size of the envelope or sorry, the, um, well, yeah, like the way the envelope looks because as a general rule, people take the card of the envelope and then throw the envelope away. So, I mean, eh. so I don't know. You can do it the other way. I just, I don't like how much bulk it adds. But yeah. Like there's, so there's the envelope. One down, several to go. I'm trying to remember <laughs> which ones I pulled out for all of them. <laughs> I think this is the same on both sides. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, I don't know. I just cut them. That's my thought. Do you guys like to make your own envelopes or do you prefer to buy them? Do you have a preference? I find that if I'm trying to make something really special, like uh, usually if I do something fun for a pen pal, I'll make the envelope or I'll do it in a size which I can like decorate the envelope really nice. Um, but if I know that the, it's just going to go to somebody who doesn't really care about what the envelope looks like, I kind of just... I'll buy them. So I buy the A2 size envelopes for my A2 size cards and I buy the five by seven sized envelopes, but then anything outside of those two sizes, I actually make myself. 
So, and then I of course have the ability to make pretty much any size of envelope with the punch boards. So if I like didn't have, I could just make it if I needed to. Do you make all of your own envelopes, Karen? <clears throat> Amber is now in the living room yelling. <laughs> it's because she's awake. She napped through the whole live, and now she's awake, and she's going <laughs> to cause havoc just because she can. She's so funny that way. <clears throat> wow, good on you. I buy A2 size, but I make them. Yeah, me too, Karen, or Marcy. I, uh, I buy A2 and 5 by 7 and then I make everything else just because I find that the easiest way to do it. Hi, why are you yelling? You're just bad. All right. Oh, and then I just put cat hair all over that. Good job. Oh, here we go. She's back. Hi. Can you, don't rub on the camera though. You can stand there. Do you want to sit on my desk? You can sit on my desk. <clears throat> the problem is that I have stuff like everywhere so there's nowhere for her to like sit down and just chill hey do you want to come sit on the desk no she wants to get in the camera all right excuse me kitchen that is cute no don't rub on that <laughs> I just set her on my other desk. She won't stay there, but. <clears throat> oh, poor Mist is trying to sleep under the desk. It's like, shut up. You like to use old calendars to make envelopes. That would be cool. I actually got a, uh, um, I bought a, what was it? It was like a sticker advent calendar. Let's see if I can figure out where I put them. And it came with these really cool envelopes that I've been like hoarding. Again, because I want to put it in a journal. You know what? I'm probably not going to be able to find it easily. I'll send you a picture later, Karen. It's just this really neat um, box of envelopes. And they're like, they're a vintage aesthetic. And they're just, oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I have no idea where they went. I could have swore I put them here with my journaly stuff. But if I did, I don't know where I put them. That's okay. I'll send you a picture later, but yeah, it's uh, just this really cool envelope design that I'm like in love with. I've never made, I've only ever really used like cardstock like this to make envelopes. Like I've never really um, like used calendars or newspaper or whatever. Like I've never used anything like that to make envelopes. I bet you that would be really cool though. Cause you'd get a really interesting aesthetic from it depending on what you're, you're going for. Oh, yeah. I use Christmas catalogs from posh food shops for Christmas cards. You use a catalog to make a Christmas card, Jerry? That's cool. Like, do you use it as an, like a pattern paper? Like, that's how you use it? Because I bet you that would need, make some really neat backgrounds and stuff. Actually, we probably make a lot of really cool things. Use it to make rosettes. Use it to make flowers. I've never thought of that. Very cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm really bad at using pattern paper. It is not my forte by like a long shot. Because um, I never use it. So I've like, <laughs> but I, I'm in love with it. So I've started purchasing like really cool pattern papers. And then I look at them and I'm like, what do I do with you? And then I pet it and put it back. That's pretty much what I'm doing with it. <laughs> oh boy. I'm, I'm odd, I guess. I'm kind of odd. <clears throat> yeah, like I, <laughs> especially there's this one brand and it's um, Art of Alchemy is the name of this brand. And I think it's based in, it's like Poland or something. And they just... They make the most stunning papers. I can show you guys a couple of them really quick here. 
and they're just stunning and I'm like obsessed I don't know what to do with the paper <clears throat> but I'm like in love with it let me see if I can find you just a couple of different ones I have a couple of like different kinds of paper now because I'm starting to hoard it like a champion because I'm crazy like that but I've called, I pulled out a couple. This is only a couple of the... Oh, no, I just dropped stuff on the floor. Uh, this is just a couple of the ones that I've, like, purchased. <clears throat> it's like... <laughs> I've got this, like, fall-themed one. And then it has cut-aparts. And I love to fussy cut things. So I, like, buy the cut-aparts. And then I sit on the couch at night and just fussy cut stuff. Like, I don't know if you can see, like, the different... The different papers. But they're... They're just, and then this one's like Harry Potter-esque, which if you were here earlier, you know that I love Harry Potter. So it just made me, like it's florals and it's arches and it's, you know, these like really cool, vibrant colors and it came with cut aparts and I like to fussy cut things. So, and then there's this like steampunky one and it, uh, it's got like ladies and gears and rain, um, butterflies and lanterns and like some rust colors and it's just they're just so pretty and then this one is uh like galaxy-esque so it's like space and it's got you know like vibrant purples and this also has a cut apart they all have cut aparts by the way um but yeah like it's just so pretty and this this is only a few of the ones that I have don't tell my husband I'm just kidding he knows um but yeah, and I just like love them. So I've been slowly collecting them. And like, so these for that fall one I just showed you, these are the cut aparts for the fall. So I just like sit on the couch in the evening while Chris is playing video games and I, I just cut the cut aparts and save them. And then when I sit down and actually make something, I have all these cool ephemera pieces to, to play with. So like, it's just so fun. I, and like, I don't know if I'll, I'll, I'll use them eventually, but like, I just, I don't know. I don't want to use them because they're all so pretty. And then I don't want to like cut it up because I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. I don't know. Uh, so I just, like I say, I bring them out and I pet them and then I put them back. That's what I mean. I'm a hundred percent with you, Cherry. Like, Oh, the, the, um, catalogs are high end. Yeah, I bet they are. That's really cool. So you get like a decent weight. So there's nothing worse than flimsy paper. I don't know. I just don't like flimsy things, <laughs> but that's, yeah, I like, I don't want to, I don't want to cut them. So they just sit there and I'm like, you need to use this or something. You can't just hoard paper because I'm not, I'm not a cluttery person. Like I don't, I don't enjoy clutter. Like when I finish creating stuff, I like clean up. Like I can't, because I can't come back and create and clutter again. So it has to be like tidy. I'm just not a, a cluttery creator or anything. Like I just, I don't like it. So I, I like to tidy things up. But I'm like falling in love with pattern paper. And then I don't know what to do with it. I know that eventually I'm going to cave and use it for like journals or something. But like right now, I'm just struggling. No, I can't. I'm with you, Marcy. Like, I just, I can't. I can't. I've like seen people who like show pictures of their desk at the end of the day or whatever. And it's just like stuff everywhere. And I, I wouldn't be able to create. Like, I would come back in here the next day or whatever. And I wouldn't be able to make anything. Because I would clean. Because I just, I can't. I find that clutter makes me less creative. <clears throat> so. And I'm not like... OCD or anything like I don't I don't have like a problem that way I just find that my creativity is sapped when I when everything's a mess like it just I don't like it and so it kind of yeah it's just not my thing but I don't like it in any part of my house it doesn't matter like I don't like clutter as a general rule anywhere like my creative space is just I try really hard to have it clean just because I like that but excuse me at my work we don't get our own desks which I hate by the way not that that's relevant to anything because I have <laughs> I 
and then been back to work. Ooh, I feel so bad. I went, uh, I went casual, right? You guys know in March and I haven't been back to work yet. Um, yeah, kind of naughty. I, uh, I just, I, yeah, I was struggling a little bit there. Um, I'm just burnt out from healthcare a little bit and I just, I needed, I needed a break. So I have not, not been back to work yet. Luckily our casual, uh, you only actually have to pick up one shift every six months to stay casual. Not that that's, I'm like, I don't think that's a great idea because you probably forget how to do the job, but, um, that's how our union is. So <clears throat> Uh, I do the same thing at work. I had to clear out my desk and have it all put away and organized before I can start again. I'm, I would be the same at work, except we don't, uh, we don't get our own desks, which is a pretty big bone of contention. Um, but what do you do? This is what happens when you work for the government, I guess. I work somewhere where I didn't have a desk or I had to share a desk and I did not like it. Yeah. You know what? I'm not even, I, I'm okay with sharing a desk casual, like, as I'm only there when I choose to be there. So it's way different. But when I was there all the time, it was really frustrating. And I, I never got at the same desk, like not ever. <clears throat> so it was just frustrating because you kind of go in feeling a bit, I don't know. I don't even know if anxious is the right word, but you almost feel a little anxious because you like, you don't know where to go and you don't know where to sit. And I had already at that point been there two years, I think. So depending on who you were working with, because if they were there before you, they got the desk and whatever. Yeah, it was just, it was weird. I don't know. I didn't appreciate that very much. I, uh, I like having an assigned desk personally. So you just feel like something's a little bit yours, you know, like I could have taken in a piece of art or something and, but that's okay. doesn't matter now. Now I can have all the art I want. I, uh, I have, uh, a card from you, Marcy, in front of me. And then I have a card from Sandra. And then I have a watercolor painting. Uh, and then I have a card from Karen in front of me. And I think, did you make this card, Marcy? You might have. I actually have, I have two of your cards in front of me. <laughs> and then I have a card my husband made. So like now I can have all the arts because I work at this desk. Well, and you know, multiple other places, but yeah, right? Like, I, I just feel like you need a home. It was weird. I don't know. It's just one of those things, I guess. It's just nice to feel like you have, like, a place to go. But. <laughs> you couldn't be possessive there, though, because <laughs> you didn't, you didn't get a desk. So I was, um, part-time. Because they consider anything that's not full-time, part-time. So when I started in the first line, that office, I, um, I was considered part-time, even though I worked, um, a point nine. So full-time is a one, right? So that would be like full-time hours would be a one. Um, and I worked, yeah, I worked, uh, point nine. So I was like just shy of full-time. And, uh, yeah, you don't get a desk as a part-timer. You're not supposed to get a desk as anything. However, that's not so true, depending on who he is. <clears throat> I think this is how this goes, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Down to the last three. And then we're going to, we're going to end the live, you guys, if that's okay with you guys. Because I need to, I'm going to make a cup of tea. Although, hey, I did say 6, and we're going to be like 6.30, so that's not bad, actually. Uh, yeah, so it was like a point nine, right? I have all of your creations on display. Oh, thank you, Marcy. That's so sweet. Uh, if you guys, for anybody who isn't, who isn't Marcy, uh, or Karen, because Karen knows, I have a Happy Mail list um, on, like, it's in my channel. It, uh, you can join the Happy Mail list if you want to, and I send out stuff to people. That's how, that's how some of these ladies have my cards and whatever. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. If you, or alternatively, if you want to send me a card and hang in front of me to be admired by me, you can send it to my PO box. So I have one of those too. Which these ladies also know, because that's how I have their creations in front of me. And it's just, it's, 
funny the feeling I get when I open the P.O. box and it's like there's a card in there from somebody. It's just such a wonderful feeling. Like it just, I don't know. So, so much fun. Are you heading out, Karen? Are you running away? I have three more envelopes to make before I'm going anywhere. So I will be here for a little bit yet. <clears throat> but I am going to end after these, these three. It is, it's, yeah, that's probably why I got so into pen palling. Because you go and you open your, your mailbox and you get this just cool letter from someone who's, you know, of a different culture, of a different nationality or whatever, whoever they happen to be here. Um, I, I did have a Canadian pen pal for a while. That was pretty cool because she was from the East Coast. Uh, and of course, I'm on the West Coast. So it was really neat. I think I'm on your list. Are you, Cherry? Lovely. Well, then I'll have to make sure I get send you out some something fun. I don't know what yet, <laughs> but something fun. <clears throat> I try to pick a person every month. That's kind of what I've been trying to do. I need to up that a little bit, but that's what I've been trying to do. So I just, I haven't gotten to everybody on it yet, but everybody will get something eventually. It just takes me a little time. And of course this month I haven't done anything with it because I just, I'm trying to get rid of, I had my first class on the 7th and then I, um, the class was popular enough that I have to do a second class on the, I think I picked the 28th, whatever the last Sunday of the month is. Um, and then, yeah, so... And then I have this festival that, I have to, that I'm doing. So I just, I haven't sent anything this month, but I need to do that because I, I love sending mail. It's one of my favorite things ever. Oh, okay, Karen, well, enjoy. Uh, enjoy playing cards with your hub, your hubby. What are you guys going to play? Not that it matters. You're probably gone already. I'm just curious. Uh, enjoy your cards. I hope you guys have fun. Thank you for coming and hanging. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Marcy has sent me several cards. So has Sandra. You guys are... It's, so Karen actually has two. I've got a couple of things from Karen too. So it's pretty cool. It's just... I don't know. I just love it. love opening mail that's not bills and or flyers. I should say flyers are actually way worse. <clears throat> now it's pretty much all flyers all the time. And it's for weird stuff. Like we have a bulk store in town. They send flyers out like they're trying to kill trees like champions or something I don't know they send so many flyers and I'm always like you're a bulk store why are you stop that I guess maybe that's why maybe they buy their flyers in bulk I don't know I'm trying to weird <clears throat> oh well thank you for talking to us cherry much appreciated I mean Otherwise, it would just be me sitting here talking to myself, <laughs> which, I mean, hey, if you wanted to hear me tell weird stories, I guess that's possible. I did work in healthcare. I still work in healthcare. I, uh, I have worked in healthcare for like 12 years now, so I, I have stories, let me tell you, but if you guys don't chat at me, I kind of just sit here and talk to myself, which is probably really weird. I don't know. I'm kind of an odd gaffer, I guess. <clears throat> Are you heading out, Cherry? Okay, well, fair enough. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a lovely day. And feel free to come by and chat again. Oh, Linda's still hanging out. Hello, Linda. Very lovely. Marcy, have you been here the whole time? Are you hang are you leaving Linda? I am still here. Oh good. Linda's still here. That's lovely. Bye, Cherry. You have a lovely day. We'll chat at you next time. No, not yet. Okay, good, Linda. <clears throat> what are your hobbies, Linda? What do you enjoy doing outside of paper crafting? Do you have any preferences? Oh, Marcy, you're just lovely. Thank you for coming for the whole time. You're just so, you're so supportive. Marcy, you're just so sweet. I just, did I cut, oh, I cut that straight. I didn't think I did. Hey, hey, look at me go. I'm winning.
Oh, we're almost there. Do you? Did you guys already have dinner? What time is it where you are? I know you told me. I'm sorry. I forgot. My hubby is bringing home dinner when he has done work tonight. So that will be lovely. Watch good movies. Cook, read, do Bible study, and watch good movies. What constitutes a good movie? Because that can be very subjective. What do you like to read? I, I am not much of a cook, I'll be honest. I, I shouldn't say that. I can cook. I'm not horrible by any means. However, cooking is just... It's not my jam. It, I can bake and I bake pretty well. And I can make, you know, like a handful of meals and I make the handful of meals really well. But cooking is just not, not my thing. I don't really enjoy it that much. And it, you know, whatever. So, but I am incredibly lucky because my husband enjoys cooking. And he is phenomenal at it. Like he just, <laughs> he makes like beef wellingtons and stuff. Like I, I had never had a beef wellington before him and I got together. And he makes them individually so your steak is to your taste. Like he is just the most wonderful person. Not just because he can cook, although that is a big, was a big component in us when we first got together. Um... But yeah, I just, I don't, I don't really enjoy cooking very much, but I can bake pretty well. I made some cookies the other day um, and probably make banana bread next week. I also, uh, I do sourdough. I, uh, I have a sourdough starter that's a hundred years old that I got from a coworker and that's pretty fun. I make sourdough bread, but yeah, so I love to bake, but cooking is not really my jam. What are you going to have for dinner, Marcy? Do you guys know? Do you already have it planned out? <clears throat> I tried a different recipe the other day. So I, tr I try to cook because it's not fair to expect my husband to cook like seven days a week when he also goes to work full time, right? Like that's not fair. So I try to cook even though I'm, I'm not that great and I don't enjoy it that much. But I tried a new recipe this week. It was um, um, pork chops in a um, mushroom soup. And it turned out okay for a, a recipe I'd never done before. Yeah, it went pretty well, I think. I know. <laughs> yeah. It, the starter is ancient and it, uh, it's just, it's so, what is the right word for that? It's so resilient because you can kind of ignore it if you're, you know, you're not baking or anything that week. I mean, I keep it in the fridge regardless because I don't, I don't bake every week. We don't eat a ton of bread. Um, but, but yeah, it's so resilient that that sourdough starter and it makes really good bread. I like cooking in my crock pot the best. Soup, meat, veggies, different kinds of rice and noodles. I, I really want to try to make some homemade soup as a person who's not the greatest cook in the world. Um, so if you have any recipes that you think are really great, Linda, let me know. Because I really would like to make some soup. Homemade soup is on my uh, my list of things I wanted to accomplish this year. I did that. I did a list of 24 new things that I wanted to try in 2024. And uh, making soup is actually on that list. So if you have a, a, a like, beginner-friendly soup recipe, let me know. Because I, uh, I would love to try it. Because that's, yeah, it's not really my forte. And my husband doesn't really like soup that much. But I love soup. Soup is, like, my favorite thing. I'm just I love soup. <clears throat> it's just so comforting and, like, heartwarming. So I'm always a pretty big fan. So movies from the 1930s and 40s. Okay, very cool. <clears throat> Do you just prefer that kind of like aesthetic or they're pretty wholesome usually, I think, right? They just, they're just a very different thing than we have today for sure. Yeah, the crock pot is a really neat invention. I, uh, I do uh, my chili in the crock pot and it, uh, it's pretty good if I say so myself. I usually make like comforting meals, whereas my, ha my husband makes like fancy meals. Um, so I like, I make a really good lasagna. I make a really good chili, that kind of stuff. And then he makes like fancy stuff <clears throat> or, or alternatively, he, he makes like really good, just like random stuff. Like, he makes really good wraps. Like it's easy stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's just funny. <laughs> All right. Woohoo. We got through some. <laughs> I still have more to make, but that's okay. 
but yeah. Uh, you like the style of clothes? Well, they had, yeah, clothes were vastly more flattering than they are now, for sure. Like, for sure. No, no questions asked. Uh, we make a really good pulled pork. Ooh, pulled pork. That's something I've never made that I, I wouldn't mind trying to figure out because I really enjoy pulled pork. Like, it's really good. <clears throat> so we're done the envelopes. I'm just going to tidy up the stuff I have everywhere. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what I've got for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Much appreciated. And if you want to pick up any of the stuff I used, I'm going to put all the links in the description now so you can purchase them if you had any interest in any of the things. Um, yeah, using my affiliate links just gives me a small commission because I'm the one who sent you there. So yeah, if you, if you don't mind, that would be lovely. If you don't feel obligated, it's perfectly fine. If you don't want to, no worries there. But I think we did pretty good. But yeah, so that I'm going to leave you guys at that. Thank you so much, so much for hanging out with me for this like three and a half hour video or live stream. And we will make a plan to make a card together next time. So thank you so much, guys. And I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now. I have to find my mic. Oh, there it is. I was like, I have to find my mouse so I can turn off the live stream. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>